Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that's loud. Uh, ooh. Welcome to the May 31st, 2023 Zoning Board of Adjustment meeting. Our next meeting will be here, June 28th, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. Um, everyone could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Emlyn, can you read in the preamble, please? Certainly. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We will proceed with the petitions in the order they're listed on the agenda, unless the board deems it appropriate to take a petition out of order. State law and local ordinance set out the criteria that must be met in order for this board to grant a request. The minimum requirements are outlined on the form provided by the Community Development Office, and the petitioner should proceed with this format to provide adequate justification for the board to grant the request. The chair will then open the meeting to hear testimony either for or against the request. All discussion will be between the speaker and the board. Please be respectful of all, and in the interest of time, refrain from repeating previous testimony. No new documentation will be accepted by the board for consideration this evening, but the board reserves the right to ask for additional testimony at any time. After hearing the facts from all parties regarding a petition, the chairman will close the public hearing and the board will deliberate, deliberate and vote on the request before moving on to the next petition. Please turn off your cell phones, pagers, anything else that will beep in the middle of the meeting, and would those who are planning to testify tonight please stand up. All right, so for anyone that's looking to speak tonight, if you could please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? All right, thank you so much. Um, Chuck, can I have you sit in for Rodney tonight? I'd be more than happy to. Thank you so much. All right, so we have a full board. Um, I'm going to be moving the annual meeting, um, the election of officers, to the end. So that's going to be... Uh, that's going to be in with item number 17. So we, we will move to item number four, uh, which is petition 52060 W Highway <laughs> LLC petitioner owner variance under section 17.07.3 of the zoning ordinance to permit a billboard sign to be erected in the C2 General Commercial District parcels located at 526 Daniel Webster Highway in the C2 General Commercial Aquifer Conservation Elderly Housing Overlay Districts and the Wellhead Protection Area. Tax map 5D-2 lot 001. Case ZBA 2023-11. This item is continued from March 29th. Nope. Right. There we go. That's it. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Eli Lano. I'm an attorney with Bernstein, Schur, Sawyer, and Nelson in Manchester. Attorney Michael sends his regards. He's unfortunately traveling tonight. I'm joined by Charlie Morgan, the principal of the owner applicant here, which is 526 DWLLC, owner of the property, which is, I think, more commonly known as the vault location, so that you know where we are discussing. Uh, as you've certainly seen from your agendas, we have six applications in front of you, which looks a bit daunting and um, like we're asking for an awful lot. But I think in reality, it's six pieces of one fairly straightforward application, which is for a billboard sign to be erected along the F.E. Everett Turnpike. Um, we need relief, certainly for the size based on the zoning ordinance, which is the first hearing which you've opened, but also just for the location of the pylons uh, within the wetland setbacks, um, off-premises site, and then for um, various aspects of the use in wetlands and location in terms of where it is on the property. So I've also brought a uh, sign over there. I know you have a, a plan in your packages, but I think in true Greg fashion, having multiple colors would be helpful. And if I could just take a moment and sort of guide you through the site, I think that'll be helpful to get through the six applications for okay, you in absolutely. a timely fashion. And then when we get to the uh, the five points of law, if you could just, or I should say the five bullets in the... Take the mic from back there.
when you, when you get to that point, if you could just stop after each one in case we have questions. Absolutely. Thank, right, you. thank you. So generally, and again, these are taken all together. The things we're asking for is that in Merrimack, you have a right to a certain size sign with frontage on the DW highway. We actually, because of the amount of frontage we have, have the right to two signs. However, the existing sign that's been refaced with the vault information is larger than what would be allowed under the ordinance. So we need a relief for the second sign. Existing sign is here, roughly. The new sign is proposed to be Excuse here. Can you, can you bring that up so we can actually yeah. look this way? Ah, perfect. Uh, you don't have to go that far away. I mean, it's a little bit easier for us to see. Yeah, absolutely. Um, sorry, sorry, Chuck. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, this is a close-up. It shows in purple where the sign posts would be, the size of the sign in the yellow, bounds of the property here, and then Effie Everett Turnpike and the state own this property, but the road right of way is really quite removed behind grass barrier, gravel barrier, breakdown lane. So we're not really particularly close to the actual road course. Um, and then in terms of other things visible on the plan, you see that this is the wetlands delineated boundary here. And I'm sure all of you are familiar with seeing this site from the road. It's a pretty steep depression into that. So the buffer is out, but it's not, it's, it's a very sharply delineated piece of wetlands course there, and we won't be in the wetlands. Um, and then the last piece is that obviously you understand the building massing on the site. I think that's important because from the Daniel Webster highway, I, I double checked tonight. There's no way that you can see where this sign is. So this will only be visible from the Everett Turnpike. Um, I think that's probably a reasonable introduction to the site and I will get into criteria. And actually, just briefly before the criteria, one other thing that I think is important to mention is that to erect a sign in this location, we did previously go and get state permits for a sign because they're the abutter and the most affected parcel. And that was granted um, earlier in the year, possibly even at the end of last year, as well as state wetlands relief from DES. So right now all we need is local permits this has been approved at the state level so there's no other contingencies there so section 1705 of the bylaws defines a billboard as a sign which directs attention to a business product services or entertainment conducted sold or offered at a location other than on the premises on which the sign is located for the purpose of this ordinance an off-premises sign becomes a billboard when it's greater than 150 feet in size again not to mix my applications here but this will be a size larger than 150 feet but also will be a combination of on-premises and off-premises sign because some of what is advertised would hopefully be the vault um, assuming permits are granted granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest because the area is significantly removed from the property's frontage on the daniel webster highway and will only be visible to vehicles traveling on the fe everett turnpike and only going in the northerly direction so it'll be one frontage on this one side of this sign. It's not intended to be visible from both directions. Um, and it's going to provide uh, info to vehicles traveling, both to advertise local Merrimack businesses, try to get people who may be only transiently in Merrimack on the highway to stop and come benefit those local establishments and also will um, provide information for the public health safety and welfare one of the things mr morgan is willing to do is that at no charge if there's something the town needs advertised 
whether that's some town going on or Amber Alert or something like that, we'd happily be able to put this up in the changeable copy sign. So try to benefit the public interest and certainly is not contrary there too. Um, any questions on first criteria? I do have one question. Um, in terms of the scope of the advertising, is it limited to Merrimack businesses or? or what? I don't think the idea is to limit it that tightly, but certainly it makes sense to advertise area businesses where there's some point where you can say at exit 12 or whatever the case is. So I don't know that we wanted to limit it directly to Merrimack as Bedford's not that far up the road, oh, et cetera. But sorry, I guess I, I, I was curious what the extent of the advertising that would be on it would be. In terms of uses or companies or? Well, it, I think if I understand where you're going with this, when we've had video signs in the past, you can either advertise for external or you can advertise internal, but you can't do both. You need a permit to advertise off premises. Um, I think the intention here would have been certainly to advertise the vault to some piece and also have relief from this board to be able to have off site. So if that's the way the relief needs to be granted, I suppose we could tailor it to that. But I, that wasn't how I read the ordinance. I'm certainly willing to be corrected if you have the provision in front of you. That was how it was explained to us the last time that we had a video sign come in front of us. I believe one of their petitions covers that actually. Yep. Um, I mean, we can certainly go over that, but uh, yes, to Patrick's point, our understanding of the ordinance is that it's either limited to businesses on the property or off the property, but it can't do both unless there's a, uh, a variance that covers that. I think the sense is that it can be on premises, but you need a variance for off premises. Again, I, I will, I have section 17 printed out and when we get to that variance, okay. it might make sense to look, certainly not, not disputing necessarily, oh, yeah, no, but, but I, I don't want to be off topic while I'm trying to keep six applications in order. Understood. Understood. Yeah, no. That, that. Um, so the goal of the ordinance is to prevent visual clutter that would reduce the attractive uh, attractiveness of Merrimack and increase the risk to motorists or pedestrians by causing reduced visibility. Um, by having one sign with changeable copy, where and it changes every ten minutes or greater, which is the prescription of the ordinance. It's not creating visual clutter because you could conceivably have six six different advertisements in an hour rather than having six signs you only have this one sign and then i think a big piece of that ordinance and the size restrictions thereof is that if someone is making the left hand turn out from onto the dw highway you certainly don't want a big sign where you limit visibility as you know on this piece of the property there's no entrance or exit onto the highway so that concern is is de minimis or inc there's no pedestrians, there's no cars turning. So it's um, in keeping of the spirit of the ordinance that you're not causing pedestrian or traffic safety issues there. Okay, any other questions from the board? The highway you mean is heavy. Yes, <coughs> sorry, I, understood. <coughs> any other questions from the board? All right, please continue. Granting the variance would do substantial justice. Uh, this is the balancing test as the New Hampshire Supreme Court has sort of interpreted it. So we're balancing private benefits versus the any possible detriment to the public. In this case, I don't think that there's a detriment to the public. You advertise local businesses, which is part of the public. You provide information. And then in terms of another public benefit is that this sign is going to increase tax revenue to the town. We spoke to some other clients who had permitted signs in the area and it's up to seven to $10,000 of tax revenue a year with no services, certainly not generating uh, kids and school bus trips to schools or any of the things like that that use services. There's not water related to it. There's not sewerage. So it is really just a pure benefit to the town in terms of revenue mm -hmm. along with the other pieces and then obviously a public benefit, a private benefit to the owner. Just a, he's applied for this because it's an opportunity to generate revenue on the site in a low impact way. All right, any questions from the board? 
All right, please continue. Okay. Granting the variance would not diminish the values of surrounding properties. This site is in the C2 commercial zone. As you know, there's all sorts of uses on this stretch of the Daniel Webster with their backs of the properties against the F.E. Everett Turnpike. Um, the abutting neighbor, is the, it's the bus depot, I believe, and then there is the transmission line. So there's really a, a low risk that this sign is going to have any effect on the neighborhood. It's not visible from the DW Highway. It's very remote, very removed. And again, the most affected neighbor would be the state, and they granted the permit for state level in terms of putting up a sign. <coughs> Okay. The only question that I have about the spirit of the ordinance, and this is maybe just something I need clarification on, is that my understanding of this particular ordinance is that billboards are considered a prohibited sign in Merrimack. So that being said, what would you say the spirit of the ordinance is? Well, as defined in the ordinance, it's to reduce visual clutter. And I think that if you have a sign of this size in the wrong location, it is certainly visible clutter. It makes things dangerous. If we were to ask to put this sign on the frontage in the front of the property on the Daniel Webster, it's too big. You couldn't make those turns. It'd be in the way. That's a spot where I think we all just drove. I know we all just drove to this meeting. You know that there's some stop and go traffic at certain times. You want people to be able to pay attention. Whereas on a multi-lane interstate style highway like the F.E. Everett Turnpike, you want to have signs of a sufficient size so that people aren't squinting and trying to see what did that say? How does this work? So that's the reason why at this very, it's a one of one location, which I'll discuss in criteria five, you want to have a sign that's of the correct size so that you can direct people um, pass along the information, all of the other things that are stated in section 17 as the reasons for the sign ordinance. And to have it, because of the unique shape and size and location of this lot, you want to have a big enough sign that it's actually usable and not a safety hazard, which an overly small sign would be. Okay. So. Are there any uh, questions from the board? All right, please continue. Um, unnecessary hardship and criteria five, the special conditions of the property that distinguish it, distinguish it from others in the area. This, again, I don't want to continuously say you've seen this property. So I also provided the, um, the picture of it. You have a thick tree buffer along most of the properties between the F.E. Everett Turnpike and whatever use is on the DW Highway. This is a spot where because of that transmission line, you don't have that thick tree buffer. So you already have something, the transmission line, that's not terribly attractive necessarily, but is understandable and necessary. But because of that, you have to clear the trees and make sure that they're kept clear, which makes it visibly a perfect place for this billboard because you know that you're not taking away natural undergrowth, et cetera, that would need to be removed for the transmission line. Um, it's a commercial zone, has that break in the natural buffer, and uh, borders along a highway. So it's we wouldn't want to put this on the frontage on the other side of the property because it's not the right location for it. But along the F.E. Everett Turnpike, there are already some existing billboards. Uh, I know, obviously, every one of these applications is taken de novo because each property is unique, but this wouldn't be the first large format sign in Merrimack, certainly not in New Hampshire. So wouldn't be out of place on that roadway. All right. Any questions from the board? All right, please continue. And the proposed use is reasonable. Uh, there's cases that say when the conditions of the land render the use for a variance, certain conditions make it reasonable. This is again, because this site has that commercial zone on the highway next to a transmission line with a use that we see both in Merrimack with larger format signs and throughout the state and realistically on almost every interstate in, in this country. It's a reasonable use. And again, I think the important part for this board is to make sure it's in a reasonable place. And this is a one of one lot where you have those confluence of factors that make it reasonable. Any questions? 
All right, please continue. I think that was... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, was that unnecessary three. hardship today? Certainly happy to answer any questions or go further into any pieces of this application. Yeah, my I guess my my only thought is much like what uh, what Patrick has has stated earlier. This is not the first time we have encountered a request for a billboard, and billboards are prohibited in Merrimack. So, um, I don't really have an opinion as to it. I just I don't I have a hard time seeing the spirit of the ordinance in this case. I'm not saying that it's not a good place for this, for a billboard. I actually don't think that it's a bad place at all. I just, I, I, I can't, I can't justify in the criteria, the, um, the spirit of the ordinance in this case, when it's explicitly prohibited. I understand that argument. And certainly there's an inherent hardship in prohibiting something in every location across town. <clears throat> doesn't necessarily mean that a zoning board can't consider all the factors and say that we do have this predetermined inclination against larger format signs, but in a situation where the site has these unique factors, you're certainly entitled and empowered to issue a variance. There are many, many sites here where if I were to bring this application or if a client came to me and said, we'd like to bring this application, I'd say, no, it's against the spirit of the ordinance. The board is not going to even consider that because you're creating these pedestrian hassles. You're creating driver risk because it is the wrong spot. Whereas on this site, they have an adequate sign on the front, correct size based on having 600 feet of frontage. But in the back, you're not next to any spots where you're trying to protect, protect pedestrian and traffic safety, which is the spirit of the ordinance. So you can meet that criteria despite the blanket prohibition in the ordinance. Okay. One well, of the still having ZBA right to make that decision on an individual basis for a lot where it makes sense. Absolutely. One of the questions that came up multiple times the last time we had one of these is uh, the impact of a, a, uh, an LED or a light sign, a light up sign on residences that border the highway. Um, so I don't, I don't have a map in front of me to see which streets might have visibility from across the highway. Because I understand where that location, I don't see that being any problem for folks driving down UW Highway. No, you're not really near any of the residential houses or those pockets there on the dw and again it's a deep lot screen. no i meant on the other side of the uh the everett on the other side yeah so i'd have to i'd have to look at this I've, map. I've got it um on the other side of the everett you've got back river road yeah and there's nothing on the everett side of back river road all the houses are on the west side and there's a huge buffer between Back River and the highway. So okay. I don't think you're going to affect lighting with them at all. OK. <clears throat> that makes sense. I have a question. So when you talk about signage and billboard, it, am I correct that your reference to signage and billboard is an electronic sign? Yes, and that's another, okay. that is another variance criteria. Now, or, the town uh, has <clears throat> five or six criteria around the site. So am I correct in assuming that your proposal is going to comply with all those criteria? Which provision well, it's got of brightness seven. levels? Um, not temporary uh, uh, advertising. Um, static messages for a minimum of 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Actually, I believe it's 20. It was 20 okay. previously. I think this version oh, of did. the ordinance has. I'm looking at an old ordinance. I'm sorry. This is a 22 10. to 23 ordinance. For oh, 22. Okay. It's interesting that if you oh. Google your ordinance, the 2016 version is the first link. But if you go into the site, you get the newest version. I've run into that a bunch of times. That may be the case. You know, so it, it talks about frame effects. So it's not flashing from message to message. Would this fall under the planning committee? Understood. 
No. I'm sorry, I can't hear that deliberation. I was just talking to him about something different. Don't worry about it. Yeah. It's a public meeting. I apologize. Let's let's continue. So, Sorry, so I, I I take it then that you're saying yes, it will be in compliance with the criteria in the Merrimack uh, zoning ordinance relative yeah. to electronic signs. That's correct. It's okay. it's not intended to be a flashing sign or anything. It's yeah. the time. It's a static billboard that will changeable copy to different. Which again provides that benefit where if it were just a sign that said vault motor storage, there's no possibility of advertising something that the town would like generally out to the public, whether that's again, amber alert, silver alert, snow emergency, whatever the case may be. Just for your reference, I was looking at page 17 12 of the Merrimack zoning and building code. Okay. And I so. have it printed off somewhere along all of these papers and I think it might be in my you bag. Do? Okay. okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So do we want to go ahead and open to the public now? Are we good? Sure. All right. Is there anyone that's looking to speak in favor of this petition? All right. Uh, please, if you can, one at a time, um, grab the microphone that's in the back and state your your name and where you reside and let us know what your thoughts are. Thanks. Tim McGue, Five Bowers Landing. Known uh, the petitioner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members of the board. I'll just grab that. Thanks. I've known the petitioner, uh, Mr. Morgan, since he purchased the property and started to improve it. And uh, I'd, I'd ask the members of the board to consider and act favorably on this petition for a number of reasons. Num number one, uh, Mr. Morgan has considerably improved the property and is probably one of the more conscientious property owners that I've ever come in uh, contact with. Recently, um, he asked me, so I'm a state rep, if you, you probably knew that. Uh, recently, he asked me, even before I got elected, if I could help him with some stormwater protection plants. Uh, so in, in the aspect of protecting the wetlands, he's so conscientious that he actually asked how he could be more conscientious in that regard. And what I found out recently when I followed up uh, after giving him some information and doing a bit of research and actually learning what a SWIP was and the requirements, I found out that he has decided to put his own, at least one of his own employees through the program to self-certify and keep an even closer eye on things like that. So that's the kind of guy this particular property owner is. So when it comes to complying with like EPA regulations, uh, if you didn't know, you, you probably do know this. I'm sure you do. Uh, I didn't. Uh, but New Hampshire is one of the few states that uh, doesn't have uh, certain uh, services for certification. And we have some requirements for research. I mean, you, you guys already know this because this is what you do but I didn't. Uh, and so when this, when Mr. Morgan asked for some help from his uh, representative to learn about how he could be even more compliant with uh, surveying require, requirements after a quarter of an inch of rain or a half inch of rain, he took it upon himself to put his own employees through that program. Um, I'm very familiar with this particular property uh, and this particular parcel. I've walked it myself and take a, taken a look to see uh, since last August, um, what you can see in terms of line of sight houses, and it is not possible uh, in the normal times of the year. And I haven't been out there in the dead of winter, uh, but from now at least until October, there's not a house to be seen um, when you look out. It's kind of a tunnel. If you haven't been back there, uh, I'm sure you can probably see from the pictures, and I actually have some pictures of my own. Um, you can't see a house in any direction. And when you drive by, you just get a fairly fleeting glimpse <laughs> of the vault. Um, his sign supplier, he's recently upgraded his sign, and that particular vendor 
he uses some of the best, some of the better uh, vendors. Um, this particular gentleman, uh, and I've forgotten his name, uh, Charlie, forgive me for forgetting the guy's name, but he's so fastidious about the quality of the products he uses up there. I think the guy we did it three or four times and wired the LEDs <coughs> by hand. If you haven't been by recently, take note of the LEDs that are hand wired in every spoke of the wheel around the vault, like the vault, uh, the spinning safe. So I'm just saying you've got a very conscientious property owner. So please act favorably on this particular variance and the, the following ones. I won't get up and testify on each one, but um, that's that's been my experience. Uh, and actually, I have a customer too. I, I started storing vehicles there. Uh, I don't currently any any longer. But when they first opened, it was the only place around that you could put a climate controlled, uh, uh, you know, put a vehicle in the winter. And I did for a while there. Uh, anyhow, so thanks for listening. Appreciate it. Happy to take any questions. Or if you want to see those pictures, uh, happy, to, happy to show them to you. Thanks. I think we're all set with the pictures, but thank you. Did you have a question, Ben? No. My name is Donna Prebizuski, and I reside at 15 Sarah Drive, and I'm just here to support the vault because they have supported our club. We uh, do various fundraisers throughout the year, and they generously have donated some cash for our calendar raffle, and we did a few toucher trucks, and they allowed us to use their parking lot free of charge. So that's why I'm here, and I'm hoping you will approve. All right, thank you. Is there anyone else that's looking to speak in favor of this petition? <laughs> oh, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you to the uh, membership, my name is Bill Boyd, 139 Chopper Road. Uh, here speaking in favor of the petition, as council has already alluded to, I believe the applicant has met the prongs required for approval of the petition. The, the two things that I would bring uh, anecdotally to your attention are the bill is the billboard next to the post office that's been pre-existing there for years now. Um, and quite honestly, it is is an eyesore coming up and down DW Highway. But also secondly, that the Merrimack, Merrimack Public Library has maintained an LAD, LED billboard on the side of their building now for several years, advertising their particular events. And to, to the best of my knowledge, and I have not spoken with the police chief, I think that sign has been able to function admirably in light of the fact that it's significantly located at a major uh, major intersection here in town. So with that being said, um, they've met the requirements, and I ask for your favorable consideration of the petition. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Right. Thank you. Is there anybody else looking to speak in favor of this petition? Is there anyone looking to speak against this petition? All right, I will go ahead and close the public portion for discussion or deliberation. Yes, Chuck? I would like to address the question of the spirit of the ordinance. The spirit of all of the rules and regulations that we have in Merrimack is to promulgate the best community that we can have. And it's sometimes not so easy as just checking off a box. I remember Sam Tamposi said to me one time that quality breeds quality. And we have certainly seen that in the business properties run by Mr. Morgan. And in the choice of his uh, counsel in presenting this to us, although I, no offense, I would love to have heard Greg go on and on. Um, but the real point here is that this is consistent with the spirit of what we want to accomplish in the town of Merrimack. Despite the awkward and unusual um, configuration of variances, it's important that a piece of land, which is where the variance lies, is performing its highest land use value. And nothing could be more clear to the applicant's counsel, um, the petitioner himself, and to those of us who have 
uh, looked at this um, petition for some period of time now. Uh, I think it represents the very best effort by a petitioner in the town of Merrimack to maximize his property use, to meet the highest land use value of the land itself, and to promote the best face for the town of Merrimack that a business can uh, expect to portray. And I, I, I couldn't speak more favorably for it. All right, thank you. Would you care to make a motion? How would you like to handle that? We have several. Uh... If you like, I'll make a motion. Very well, then. I would certainly bow to your better judgment. I'll make a motion that the board finds the petitioner's responses to the statutory criteria are sufficient. Proved each criterion is met, and the board adopts the petitioner's responses as the board's finding of fact. And further, to grant the variance under Section 17.07.3 of the Zoning Ordinance to permit a billboard sign to be erected in the C2 General Commercial District. Second. All right. Motion made by Lynn, seconded by Ben. All in favor? All opposed? All right. Three, two. So the motion passes, or <clears throat> variance passes. So with that, we can progress on to the next one. Which is the same property variance under section 17.10.3 of the zoning ordinance to permit a second ground sign 520.8 square foot billboard sign to be erected with less than 300 feet of contiguous frontage <coughs> along the same right of way the parcels located at 526 daniel webster highway in the c2 general commercial aquifer conservation elderly housing overlay districts and wellhead protection area tax map 5d-2 lot 001 case cva 2023-15 also continued Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the way the ordinance is written, you can have a second sign if you have an additional 300 feet of contiguous frontage on your main frontage, which we do. However, the existing sign that the vault refinished was larger uh, than what would be allowed. So it technically counts towards that overage and is now one sign counting as two, which is why we need relief for this. Additionally, um, to at least see to Mr. Mower's desire to have a little bit of Greg Michael pontification, there is frontage and also lot frontage in your ordinance, and that doesn't allow you to use the FE Everett Turnpike as frontage, which is based on a case where Greg got um, permission to get a subdivision by using that as frontage, and then shortly thereafter at the next town meeting, you have two definitions now. So. That's why while having frontage on the F.E. Everett Turnpike, we're not allowed to use that. Otherwise, we wouldn't need this variance for the second sign because it would be okay. that third sign. So I, I hope that was at least a little bit of a facsimile. Um, granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest uh, because the area on the law is substantially removed from the other signs. So again, the purpose of that is to prevent overcrowding, visual overstimulation on this, where if Mr. Morgan tried to put up a sign every 15 feet on his property, it starts looking like south of the border or something when you're driving down to Florida. And that's obviously not in the best interest of the town of Merrimack and certainly not what we're proposing. So. The sign that we've we're discussing here it would be the only sign on the property visible from the fe everett turnpike and again not visible from the dw highway so it's not contrary to the public interest it's an understanding that you have road frontage which makes it a reasonable place to have a sign this just happens to be on the back side of the property when a sign already exists on the front side of the property any questions from the board You look like you have one, though. Oh, I do. I'm also. Okay. Please continue. Uh, the spirit of the ordinance is observed because the purpose is to encourage the effective use of signage to direct movement, advertise, and inform the public while protecting public safety, 
preserving neighborhood character and minimizing visual clutter. That's in section 17.1. Um, this is again, as we discussed already, an effective use of signage without creating visual clutter. It is the only sign in that area and it's only visible from one direction on the FEA return pike and only in that one direction. Um, and it's not at all near the first sign, which again is what that prohibit prohibition on visual clutter aims to prevent. So therefore it meets the spirit of the ordinance. Okay, any questions from the board? All right, please continue. Granting the variance would do substantial justice. Again, this is the balancing test. The rationale that we discussed a few moments ago is still um, carried over into this. It's that it provides a private benefit to Mr. Morgan's property, but also provides a public benefit by advertising area businesses, providing information as the town's fit to, to present to a large number of cars traveling. That's the busiest road in the area by far so it has that opportunity and because of the neighbors and lack thereof lack of residential etc it's it's not creating a public nuisance or public detriment so in the balancing test it's very strongly weighed towards being a, a positive just clarification and maybe i may miss something so in addition to the video sign that just got permit, permitted, you want to put a ground sign there as well. So all of these variances are for the <clears throat> exact same sign, which is the sign on the corner there. Okay. Just the way the, the ordinance is broken down, we need relief to do um, several pieces of the same application. It's the one video sign, the ground sign versus wall sign as uh, de designed in your ordinance. It's freestanding, which makes it a ground sign. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions from the board? All right, please continue. Granting the variance would not diminish the values of surrounding properties. Again, it's a lot of what we discussed, but in taking that this variance is for that secondary sign, the sign on the front of the property is necessary so that customers can come and use the vault and know where it is. This is a, a different sign on the back. Mm -hmm. Closest neighbors are the state through having the FE Everett Turnpike and then the high tension transmission lines next door. And those are really the two locations where you can see this sign from. So certainly not a negative on surrounding property <clears> values. <throat> Any questions from the board? And uh, on to unnecessary hardship. Sure. So A, owing to the special conditions of the property, um, the no fair and substantial relationship exists. In regard to having a second sign here, this is a, a property with an enormous amount of frontage on the front, which is being used but not exceeded by its existing sign. And then where we can't count the F.E. Everett Turnpike frontage where it's still frontage on a road, but not lot frontage for the purposes of this. It's a, a reasonable spot. You have this triangular lot, which creates its own screening from one side to the other. There's no way you can see this sign from the DW Highway. It's not uh, creating any of the visual clutter we've discussed. Unique triangular lot that gap in the tree, the existing transmission line, there are really just a whole myriad of factors here that make this property unique. And as we discussed a few moments ago, there are not a lot of spaces and there might not be another space in this town where this makes sense. But at this site, this property is unique to the point where this does make sense. <laughs> All right, any questions from the board? All right. So um, I, I would say for all of the testimony that you provided, I absolutely agree with the, with the, the, the spirit of this particular variance. It, it makes sense because you're right. If, if the frontage were considered, this would be a non-issue. Um, and with that being said, I'll go ahead and open it to the public again. Is there anyone that's looking to speak? Oh, I'm sorry. I just want to finish that the proposed use is reasonable, oh. and I'm happy to cite to my testimony in the first variance application if that that's will fine. keep things moving. I was actually completely sure. accepting your unnecessary hardship as is, but 
please continue. Well, thank you. Uh, again, the use is reasonable. This is not the only one in town. It's not the only one on a road of this sort. Absolutely. Um, so with that being said, and I apologize again for cutting that short, I was just acknowledging the, the unnecessary hardship criteria. I will take it as a note to keep it moving, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. Um, is there anyone that's looking to speak in favor of this particular petition? Anyone that's looking to speak against this particular petition? I'll go ahead and close for discussion or deliberation. I'm ready to make a motion if you'd like. Go for it. I make a motion that the board finds the petitioner's responses to the statutory criteria are sufficient, proved each criterion is met, and the board adopts the petitioner's responses as the board's finding of fact, and further, to grant the variance section 17.11 of the zoning ordinances to permit a sign devoted to off-premise advertising where a sign advertising the on-premise use already exists. No, I think, I think you read the wrong one. Number five, I think you read number six. This is 15. This is, oh, I'm sorry, I did. Let me find 15. Yeah. I'll try again. Nope, this isn't what I need. I need the, where is 15? Heather. I'll try it again. I make a motion that the board finds the petitioner's responses to the statutory criteria are sufficient, proved each criterion is met, and the board adopts the petitioner's responses as the board's findings of fact, and further to grant the variance under section 17.10.3 of the zoning ordinance to permit a second ground sign, 520.8 square foot billboard sign to be erected on a site that already utilizes its frontage advantage by having a single oversized ground sign. All right, motion made by Lynn, seconded by Chuck. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? So 410. Um, that, that carries forward as well. So for the next petition, same property, variance under section 17.11 of the zoning ordinance to permit a sign devoted to off-premise advertising where a sign advertising the on-premise uses already exists. Parcels located at 526 Daniel Webster Highway, C2 General Commercial, Aquifer Conservation, Edley Housing Overlay Districts in the Wellhead Protection Area, Tax Map 5E-2, Lot 001, Case ZBA 2023-16, which was also continued. So, in looking at Mr. Uh, Dwyer's point that it is a parcel may contain either an on-premises sign or an off-premises sign, but not both, unless it has enough frontage to display two signs as described in 17.10.3, in which case one sign may be devoted to on-premises advertising and one sign devoted to off-premises advertising. Um, I, I, have a hard time saying that you've misread this piece but <laughs> um, again it's interesting with a changeable copy sign that if the on-premises sign occasionally set it but I don't know that might be a, a variance for a later day but we'll certainly continue with the fact that we do have the on-premises sign up front and we'll continue with the variance as written which is the right to do an off-premises sign um, Granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest. Again, this is a location that's significantly removed from the sign that for the vault on the front. And it's not a spot where someone could just say, that's where I want to store my car and drive right off the F.E. Everett Turnpike and go through safely and through an actual road. So having an off-premises sign here wouldn't be contrary to the public interest because it's not directing uh, traffic to the vault location which already has the front sign so um, and then in a benefit to the public interest it allows other area businesses and attractions to advertise to a significant number of motorists so that is a benefit to the public interest so just to clarify on on that point uh, this is only going to be advertising 
uh, businesses external to the vault or there will be vault advertising as well the way the language of the ordinance is written is that it has to be off premises and i don't think with the application i've provided unless you disagree with me i've asked for the relief to do both okay i'm only asking because from points from the first petition that you provide us a list of what would be advertised on the sign. I was just curious. I, Our intention would be to advertise the vault and from Mr. Dwyer pointing out that the either there and then you may do one or the other. I think that may have to be a later variance if we wanted to advertise the vault on this. Makes no sense. I might as well take the sign down and I'll take it out of there. Whip it down. It makes no sense. Okay. Look at I've been here for about 11 years, okay? I busted my hump to take a, a dog of a piece of property and turn it into a beautiful property. I get compliments all the time. I'm not putting a feather on my cap, but maybe I am. I'm a class act, okay? And this sign will be a class act. And any of the advertising on it will be classy. Okay, it's not going to be abused. I want to work with the town of Merrimack. I pay a lot of taxes. I'm willing to have you people use the sign if you need it. If there's an emergency, I'll work with you. But I need you to work with me. Okay, I need the ability. This type of sign is a very, very expensive sign. And I need to I need to be able to generate revenue to pay for it. Okay, I want to keep the cogs of commerce going. And this is a way of doing that. It's out of the way. I've been there for 11 years. It's just out of the way. Not to grant this permit really makes no sense. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm only asking the questions. Well, I'm venting, okay? I'm okay. not a lawyer. I'm venting. I'm just a schmuck that builds buildings and tries to keep things going, okay? But you will not be disappointed in working with me. I, I haven't let you down yet, and I won't. This will be a class act. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. And by the way, the back of the building, which I'm sure everybody's been been driving by, my intention is hopefully this year to flood that with wonderful landscaping. So when you look at the back of the building, it's not just, it's gonna be nice. Similar to the front. I went way over the top on the front of the building to, to enhance the look of the property. And I think we did a good job. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you. All right, please continue. Um, the spirit of the ordinance is observed because the goal of the ordinance as discussed is to prevent visual clutter. These signs are significantly separated from each other. So advertising off premises in this one location and then the other sign in the front with on premises is not creating a risk of visual clutter. You're different roads separated by the entirety of the building complex. So it meets that spirit of the ordinance. Any questions <clears throat> regarding spirit of the ordinance? All right, please continue. Granting the variance would do substantial justice. Again, this is the determination of public um, harm or not versus private rights. And again, there's not really a public harm here based on the location of the other uh, properties nearby, lack of residences in the area. It's an opportunity to benefit both the property, the town through the tax income stream, and then also bring attention to other businesses in the area by allowing an off-premises sign at this location. So on the balancing test, it comes out in favor of this variance criteria. All right, any questions from the board? Please continue. Wait, 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 oh, sorry. Back up again. I'm sorry. I was confused by the way you just ended that. Diminished surrounding, diminished surrounding properties. I there's no question regarding the sign. I, I, I thought we were talking about the message on the sign. Right? Did I, did I miss something? Or? No, we're talking oh. about off premises advertising. Okay, so okay. Advertising That's what I thought. Other than the vault. And again, I misunderstood your last, your last sentence. My, my fault. Never mind. You can continue. Okay. Um, was that three or four? I have. That was four. Okay, I think. Yeah. 
right? Again, for four, there's the sign is going to be there advertising in a classy manner, either Walt or advertising off premises, which is what this request is for. It will be done in a, a high class manner and not be a, an issue for neighboring lots. Okay. Um, owing to the following special conditions that distinguish it from other properties in the area, no fair or substantial relationship exists between the general public purpose of the ordinance provision and the specific application. This is again in 1711 that you can have a second sign provided you have enough frontage. We've granted the variance based on the frontage. This is, there is substantial frontage. It's an unusual lot and the conditions align such that it makes sense to grant this variance to allow off-premises advertising. Any questions from the board? And the proposed use is reasonable because for one thing, it's an allowed use with sufficient frontage. We've already granted the variance based on the frontage. So it's, it would be an allowed use. And now with that relief, it's inherently reasonable, but it's a, uh, um, it makes sense as Mr. Morgan's noted that for this thing to generate any income and to be able to be a first class sign, it's going to have to have off off premises advertising. So it's a reasonable use. All right, any questions from the board? Let's make a point. As far as off premise, I don't have a problem with the off premise advertising. I was just quoting what is in the ordinance. This isn't so you, you directed it to me a couple of times. It's it's literally I'm quoting right out of the ordinance book from that so i mean i'm just was bringing up based based on the ordinance i have no problem whether it's off but to, i'll be honest with you i really don't care if it's off 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 site or on site advertising just quoting an ordinance because that's what we have to do here so i just want to make that clear with, either with the way with sir if i offended issue. you in no, no, no. any way no, i, I just certainly I'm mean to yeah. you were the person who directed me to the fact that it does say either and then one or the other and, and that, i apologize and that, was that was, i missed no, no. that in my preparation and i just just that was just what i was bringing up i just wanted to get never mind Good. Yeah, I certainly didn't mean for that application to be in opposition to your no. point. Your point is well taken. No. All right, so I'll go ahead. Are there any other questions from the board before I do that? I'll go ahead and open this to the public. Is there anyone looking to speak in favor of this particular petition? Is there anyone looking to speak against this particular petition? I will go ahead and close. And uh, do I hear a motion? I guess I'm on a roll. I make a motion that the board finds the petitioner's responses to the statutory criteria are sufficient, proved each criterion is met, and the board adopts the petitioner's responses as the board's findings of fact. And further, to grant the variance, section 17.11 of the zoning ordinance to permit a sign devoted to off-premises advertising, where a sign advertising the on-premises uses already exists. All right, motion made by Lynn, seconded by Chuck. All in favor? Aye. Five zero zero. And now, premises. Yeah, we have a couple more on wetlands. Yeah, that's just the location. Well, yes. So okay. variance under section two point zero two point seven, same property. The zoning ordinance to permit. Uh, placement of a structure, two signposts, to be located 28.2 feet and 33 feet from the wetland boundary, whereas 40 feet is required. Parcel is located at 526 Daniel Webster Highway in the C2 General Commercial Aquifer Conservation Elderly Housing Overlay Districts and Wellhead Protection Area. Tax map 5D-2, lot 001, case ZBA 2023-12. And this seems extremely straightforward, so you don't have to stop on us. You can just go right through it. Okay. Um the ordinance prescribes a 40 foot wetlands buffer the reasons defined there to prevent the development of structures and other land uses that would contribute to pollution of surface or groundwater b to prevent the destruction and degradation of natural wetlands c to prevent unnecessary or expensive 
unnecessary or excessive expenses to the town, and D, to encourage those uses that can appropriately and safely be located in the wetlands area. This use is not going to create any pollution. Uh, there's going to be no harm to the wetlands. There will be a minor disturbance while this is getting installed in the buffer, but not the wetlands. And again, 40 foot wetlands buffer, the closer pillar is at 28 feet. The further one is 33 feet from the wetlands. And as we discussed in my preamble here, the wetlands are pretty steeply below. This buffer is yeah. at much higher ground. So we're not at risk um, to the wetlands. There will be no town expense under clause C there. And in terms of being a safe use for the wetlands, after installation, this is barely a use in the wetlands. It's just these pillar signs are in the buffer. Two square feet. Right. Two posts. In fact, two square feet. Yeah. So, two square feet. Dogs um, will be happy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, two, the spirit of the ordinance is observed. It's in the spirit of the ordinance to... Um, it's in the public interest, excuse me, to uphold the spirit of the ordinance. So it's related to the first criteria. Goal of this ordinance is really simply to prevent harm to the wetlands. And this is at the far edge of the buffer in a unique wetlands where the buffer is high ground. The wetlands is very much low ground. There's no risk to the wetlands here and mm. such a passive use as well. Um, granting the variance would do substantial justice again. As we've discussed, it's a balancing test. Without this variance, we can't effectuate in the correct location the variances you've just granted. Um, it's it's critical here for the private use of the property to have this variance, and really there's no public detriment here. We're certainly all for wetlands conservation and protection, but this is not a risk to the wetland, as discussed in the first two criteria. Um, Granting the variance would not diminish the values of surrounding properties. None of the neighboring lots are going to have big thoughts about 40 feet versus 28 and 33 feet in terms of a wetland buffer where it's not going to channel wetlands onto another lot. It's really no effect on neighboring lots. and It's not going to have any effect on property values, certainly. Um, unnecessary hardship. Again, the unique nature of this property, this is where the wetlands are, but we also need to put the sign in a place that it's safe for people to view from the F.E. Everett Turnpike. This is the logical place to do it. If we were, if I were asking you to put it in the wetlands, then it wouldn't be, but this is at the far edge of the buffer on a, a wetlands depression that's well delineated from its buffer. So again, the site is unique in that way, and it makes sense to put it in this location. And the proposed, also DES was consulted and issued the permit for the sign. So the state has already vetted this piece of it. And um, reasonable, reasonable use. This is in terms of wetlands protection. We're going to affect two square feet of property in the far edges of the wetlands buffer. It's very reasonable. I think it makes perfect sense. Um, any questions from the board on this? All right, I'll go ahead and open it to the public. Anyone looking to speak in favor of this particular petition? Anyone looking to speak against this particular petition? All right, I'll close the public. Do you want to? We, we have a system in place now. Oh, okay. <laughs> I make a motion that the board finds the petitioner's responses to the statutory criteria are sufficient, proved each criterion is met, and the board adopts the petitioner's responses as the board's finding of fact, and further to grant the variance under section 2.02.7, capital A, 6 of the zoning ordinance to permit the placement of a structure, two signposts, to be located 28.2 feet, and 33 feet from the boundary of a delineated wetland, whereas 40 feet is required. All right, motion made by Lynn, seconded by Chuck. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero zero. We're moving right along. All right, next variance under section 17.10.3b of the zoning ordinance to permit placement of a ground sign to be set back three feet from the edge of a public right of way, whereas 20 foot setback is required. Parcels located at 526 Daniel Webster Highway in the 
C2 General Commercial, Aquifer Conservation, Elderly Housing Overlay Districts in the Wellhead Protection Area, Tax Map 5D-2, Lot 001, Case ZBA 2023-13. And this is so similar to the last one. You can, again, just go right through it. Yeah, I think this is a fairly straightforward dimensional variance where we want to be closer to the the lot line then is allowed 20 feet are allowed we want the nearest edge of the sign to be three feet from the property line the reason for that is that if we were to put the sign much further back it becomes something where you really have to turn your head as you're driving by because people are going to want to look at this billboard sign that's why people use these for advertising and that's why they're in every state um i guess except for vermont but that doesn't point i <laughs> don't count um <laughs> So putting it three feet puts this in the right location. The contrary to the public interest is it's not contrary to the public interest. The point of that setback is to make sure that travel lanes are clear, that there's not, again, visual clutter, the things we've discussed. You want to make sure that traffic's not impeded. But this is a spot where the right of way is removed and then there's the breakdown lane, then there's the, the gravel, and then there's the natural grassy shoulder here. So we're pretty far removed from the, the actual roadway, obviously safely removed from that. And then if you added 20 more feet, it's too far off the property to be beneficial to see and to convey the information that's the point of the sign. So it's not contrary to the public interest to put the sign in the right place so the public can actually use this sign to review it. Uh, spirit of the ordinance is observed. Again, signage is to direct movement, advertise, and inform the public. If we put this sign in the wrong place, it has a hard time informing the public and directing and advertising. So it's within the spirit of the ordinance to allow this bylaw. Again, one of the other ordinance provisions that we've discussed is that you don't <coughs> want things too close to travel lanes where people are turning and you obstruct vision. There's no access to the FE Everett Turnpike from this piece of from this property. So you're not putting pedestrians or any other drivers in safety by having it in the location proposed and necessitating this variance. Um, substantial justice, again, the public benefit or the public harm, I suppose, by putting it in this spot is really not existing, whereas the private benefit of having the sign in the correct location where you can see it, where motorists can see it, it's clearly outweighed by the necessity of granting this variance 20 feet into the property. <clears throat> A, puts you very much closer to the wetlands and makes the less visible based on the topography of the property. So um, no reason in the balancing test not to grant this variance. Um, it's not going to diminish the values of surrounding properties. This is again, that if I ask to permit a garage three feet from my neighbor's lot line, that person is gonna say that is very close to my lot line. Whereas the state owns the FE Everett Turnpike right away and it's owned there and has already granted permission to do this. They're the most affected mm -hmm. neighbor in this. So not going to diminish surrounding properties by doing so. And again, for the other properties with DW highway addresses, this is completely screened from those closest neighbor. That's not the state is the transmission line. That's not the most beautiful use of space. They're not going to be diminished by having a, a sign near them. Special conditions of the property. Again, we've discussed the the location and the shape of the property, the location of the buildings quite a bit tonight, but also the wetlands are important to consider here that if we don't grant this and it's the 20 feet, you are getting an awful lot closer to that wetland. So it makes sense to put it closer to the property line A so people can see it and B so that we're not disturbing the natural pieces of this property. And the use is reasonable. We've discussed signs and their proliferation along roads of this type. And also they need to be in a certain location. So the use is reasonable and the location for the variance, I believe is also reasonable. Also, if you try to adhere to the variance, all you're doing is pushing it closer to DW highway and pulling it from the people that need to see it. So <clears throat> right. seems pretty common sense. All right. Any questions from the board? All right, I'll go ahead and open this to the public. Anyone looking to speak in favor of this petition? 
Anyone looking to speak against it? Go ahead and close. On me. I make a motion that the board finds the petitioner's responses to the statutory criteria are sufficient, proved each criterion is met, and the board adopts the petitioner's responses as the board's findings of fact, and further to grant the variance under section 17.10.3, lower case B, of the zoning ordinance to permit placement of ground sign to be located three feet from the edge of the public right of way, whereas 20 foot setback is required. All right, motion made by Lynn, seconded by Chuck. All in favor? Aye. All right, five zero zero. And on to the last petition for this. Um, same property variance under section 17.10.3 of the zoning ordinance to permit a ground sign with a maximum area greater than 100 square feet and visible from the FB Everett Turnpike in an area with a posted speed limit of 65 miles per hour. Parcels located at 526 Daniel Webster Highway in the C2 General Commercial, Aquifer Conservation, Elderly Housing Overlay Districts, and the Wellhead Protection Area. Tax map 5D 2, lot 001, case ZBA 2023 14. This was continued for March. So, Robert Price, Greg, and I had some spirited discussion about the table of speeds here, and it with the first variance you granted it's not particularly relevant and i believe he has that note in the staff memo as well but also the math doesn't check out it's sort of an interesting thing where the math just stops at some point and the signs stop getting bigger that was, <laughs> that's an aside and i'll stop uh vamping on this but um so we've proposed a 520.8 square foot sign here uh, the typical highway sign is 672 square feet, so it is a bit larger than this. And again, the point here is that this needs to be a large enough sign such that it's visible safely to motorists. We've already talked about the location and where it is in relation on the lot and to its neighboring highway road course, the Everett Turnpike, not the DW Highway. It makes sense to be in the location as the board has already um, voted it also needs to be a reasonable size so that people can see it they're not squinting they're not thinking i have to take my eyes well off the road and really look at that thing it needs to convey the information safely so, correct me if i'm wrong uh, billboards are one set size right no it's that billboards in this town per the ordinance anything larger than 150 square feet is a billboard which is prohibited but you okay. granted a variance to allow it right i, I was just curious because I, I thought billboard was a very specific size and not according to our town ordinance i mean in general when people are advertising so i think then it might be that 672 square feet um okay. might be the standard issue billboard size i don't i don't know that as a unit of measurement unfortunately to tell no you worries. for sure i, I was just if, curious if our sign contractor were here i bet that's something that in the industry they know for a fact but i don't um, so granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest, allowing a sign of this size in this specific location is going to be a necessity. Mm -hmm. So again, people driving can clearly see what this is quickly process the information, see what's being advertised, what town message is being displayed, look at it quickly and then carry on driving safely eyes on the road there's a reason billboards are a certain size and that we've all been in towns where you have a thinking of boston where if you have a bunch of different road signs and you can't tell what they're saying and you're squinting you're not looking at the roads so this will be a size that's large enough not to overpower the location but large enough that motorists can see it therefore in the public interest um, spirit of the ordinance again the section 7 17 definition is to encourage the effective use of signage to direct movement advertise and inform the public while protecting public safety and minimizing visual clutter there's no other signs in this area this will be the only only game in this part of town so it's not visual clutter and it needs to be large enough to do the direct movement advertise and inform the public safely if it's too small it creates a risk so in that way it's it complies with the spirit of the ordinance 
you didn't. Uh, I apologize. You, um, this seems like a very, uh, I understand why you had to complete this variance, but this one doesn't make any sense to me why we should have to discuss it. So please okay. feel free. <laughs> Substantial justice. Again, I would cite the previous testimony here relating the balancing act, but it's um, providing that public benefit as directed by Section 17 while also benefiting the lot. So the, the balance here of any potential detriment, the detriment would be on having a sign that's too small to be safely viewed from the road. So I believe it meets this criterion. Um, Granting the variance would not diminish the values of surrounding properties. Again, I think this ties directly to the first variance of the night. And again, I would cite to that um, record, but also it's it's a location where there's the natural buffering, there is the, the overhead lot line. It's not going to uh, diminish the values of surrounding properties. Again, I think you're all getting sick of me telling you that this is a uniquely shaped property with unique screening from the back to the front, zoned commercial, bordering the turnpike, and featuring a significant break in the natural buffer. So due to that power line, uh, it's ideal for a billboard of this size. We didn't ask for that standard size billboard that too big. This is the right size in discussion with our sign contractor. So. Um, I think those unique conditions help meet the unnecessary hardship standard of 5A and the use is a reasonable one. Again, as discussed, this is not an uncommon occurrence in this area, in New Hampshire and in the United States at large. It's a use that we're all very familiar with. Any questions from the board? I'll go ahead and open this to the public again. Anyone looking to speak in favor of this petition? Anyone looking to speak against this petition? I'll go ahead and close the public. Entertain a motion. You guys are going to be on the hook for the next ones. <laughs> I make a motion that the board finds the petitioner's responses to the statutory criteria are sufficient, proved each criterion is met, and that the board adopts the petitioner's responses as the board's findings of fact and further to grant the variance under section 17.10.3 of the zoning ordinance to permit a ground sign with a maximum area greater than 100 square feet and visible from the F.E. Edward Turnpike in an area with a posted speed limit of 65 miles per hour. Second. Motion made by Lynn, seconded by Chuck. All in favor? Aye. All right, five zero zero. Um, and now that we've concluded this, uh, there is also that 30 day appeal window, just so that you guys are aware. But I know we have to tell you that anyway, but Thank just so you, you know. Thank you. Charlie, quick question. Are you expanding up in Belmont? Am I what? Are you expanding in Belmont? Yes. That's what I thought. Okay. Just curious. And I got a big sign up there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going there. No, no. Well, keeping the cogs of commerce going. Thank you for asking. Thank you, board. Good luck. Appreciate Thank it very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for your effort. Next as well. I gotta grab my other uh, folder. Okay. All right. Item number 10, Drop One Portables, Inc. Petitioner and Strategic Acquisition and Real Estate Holdings LLC owner. Variance under Section 2.02.3 of the Zoning Ordinance to permit a contractor's yard in the C2 General Commercial District where the use is not permitted. Parcels located at 658 Daniel Webster Highway in the C2 General Commercial and Aquifer Conservation Districts in the Wellhead Protection Area, Tax Map 6E 2, Lot 13, Case CBA 2023 17. Thank you. Again, for the record, Eli Lano from Bernstein Schur, joined by Brian Labrie, yep. the principal of Drop One Portables. 
Um, this is a petition to allow uh, this location to continue to be used by Drop One Portables, which has a sale and rental business of portable toilet units run from the site. Um, as an allowed use in the zone, you're allowed to have personal services businesses. It's the general retail district. This is a, a use where they are renting and selling these units for off-site use. Uh, Robert and I have a bit of a disagreement in terms of what a contractor's yard is, which this isn't necessarily an exact use where it's personal services, which may be more specifically defined as things like haircuts or, or nail parlor, that kind of thing. But it's also not a contractor's yard, which would be where if a, a contractor were leaving trucks and vehicles and servicing their equipment for then use offsite, off site, but without any retail fronting space. So I just think that that's an important distinction to make before I get into the criteria here, because if there's not a third option where it's maybe not personal services, but it's not a contractor's yard, it's just a, a traditional commercial venture in a general commercial zone. So granting the variance would not be contrary to if the I could, I just had, I'm sorry, I had a couple clarification questions. Yeah. Uh, so one, it's already being used as this currently, and it was just found out, and that's why we're talking about it. That is the right building inspector. Yeah, there was an understanding that it was already a contractor's yard previously, and it was then pointed out by Robert Price that it was a fuel yard. Okay. So the previous use at this property was the Petro, um, I think it's propane and fuel deliveries. So... Okay. This, it's a it's kind of an unusual building where it's set up along the side of the property, has four garage bays and a small retail area, but then Pedro was using it to stage its trucks and run deliveries, and most importantly had three large fuel tanks underground in the back of the property or above ground? above ground? Three large above ground fuel tanks. I think it's important to note that those were recently safely and professionally removed in the correct manner so that any possible hazmat issue from having it as a fuel site has been removed. And now we're using it as the site for portable toilet units that are cleaned off site. There's no nuisance. There's no noise from cleaning or risk of smell or anything. These are clean sanitized units just getting ready to be sent to different locations for use, which again, is. It's this retail rental location, not a contractor's yard, which would be if it were only our stuff and no customer facing side. Okay, makes sense. Um, granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest. Purpose of the C C2 zone is the establishment of retail businesses to serve a regional and or local shopping and service need. Again, I think that we are providing a service and anyone that's having graduation parties this time of year or things like that, that they need portable toilets for, this is the service that we provide from this location. Um, it's a retail use. There is some storage, of course, of product on site. That's not unusual either. Any sort of more traditional retail site would have its wares on site as well and still be able to sell them. These just happen to be set outside. And then if this variance is granted, site plan review will be undertaken and there's a proposal for a fence to screen all of these units from site so they won't be visible from the DW. But also if you've driven by them, they're all clean, uh, sort of navy blue with red trim, sharp looking units. So it's again, important that they're going to add additional screening but also it's not a bad looking site as it is when i drove by tonight and previously um right, and um, i'm sorry were you still sorry there? i was just going to say the use will not alter the essential character of the neighbor neighborhood or negatively impact impact public safety or welfare all right thank you um any questions from the board all right please continue Spirit of the ordinance is observed. This is a zone to promote retail and service uses. This is fundamentally a retail rental um, with storage of some product on site at the back of the lot. So it's within the spirit of the ordinance to do so. Um, and 
it's not going to negatively impact any of the neighbors or the public driving by on this site. And it's again, I'm sure that the previous user was maintaining safety protocols, but that was an inherently riskier use to, to the public and to the uh, environment. Whereas this is just clean sanitized units, not hazmat chemicals. Um, Sorry, um, any questions? Okay. Please continue. Substantial justice, again, balancing the rights of the public against the right, private rights of the owner. This is an opportunity to use a site that is existing, has this building located mm -hmm. with the multiple garage bays, is set up for a, a certain type of use to dispatch these things. And, and in the previous case was fuel, and in this case it's a, well able to set up, park the trucks inside at night. Um, there's really not a huge detriment here, whereas if this is not allowed, then this location can no longer be used by this business that is already in operation, employs five to eight people seasonally, and is a, a taxpayer in the town of Merrimack in a zone that sometimes gets referred to as contractor's row based on the different things that are in that area. There's just a really large number of uses. So the balance here would be to grant this variance and allow this tax paying business to continue <laughs> running a clean site and providing a service. In fact, I, I'm pretty sure this is not the only uh, property in this area that has the same designation or that was given the same designation for needing a variance. Yeah, we've had a few of these um, contractors yard ones come through and it's it's interesting because it is kind of a it, it's a seemingly ambiguous term but if i recall correctly from the previous ones we've had it's anytime you have things you're selling and they are stored outside that gets default considered a a contractor's yard in merrimack yeah i think it might be a bit inarticulately drafted because again i don't think that robert's incorrect in saying it's not a service but also I don't think it's correct to say because it's not a service, it's a contractor's yard, but that's the reason for the variance here. And yeah, again, I'm certainly not besmirching any of the other businesses in town and I don't want it taken as such, but it's not all that different that we have our wares outside here. And then there's also hot tubs, et cetera, outside. It's just different oh, yeah. uses. It's, it's what this area of town in part is used for and zoned commercial. So it's reasonable to, do it that way. Um, this is not going to diminish the values of surrounding properties. Again, this is a commercial zone. And in that general neighborhood, there's a landscape company, a church, some residences, a septic company, a farm stand, the aforementioned hot tub store. There's really a number of things in the area. Um, there's not a defined neighborhood character other than that it's a bit of an edge zone between zones and there's multiple things there this this is a commercial use in a commercial zone i shouldn't have an impact negatively on the values of surrounding properties and again i it's a less intense use than the fuel delivery trucks were absolutely agreed And again, I mentioned it, but we will have site plan review. I think it's important to mention that there's a proposal for fences. We have a plan drawn up, assuming that the use is allowed. Our next step is planning board for site plan review and fences to continue screening those things. Any questions from the board? Right. Unnecessary hardship, please continue. Sure. So this is a lot that was, as mentioned, already laid out in a certain way. If you were to change the use to something that was clearly a service use, you've seen this building. I don't know that many people are going to go for a, a salon or spa day in the existing garage bays. It's not set up well to be um, some highly customer facing in and out in and out location you'd really have to tear down the property and that's a bad economic use of something that's already a perfect building for the use that he, mr Libri is running here so um the use of the property is that in the unique factors the unique factors that the building already exists and there are very few options that are tailor-made for this where you found one that you've put your business in there and have done well at the location. So 
think that's uh, important to say that there's not a substantial relationship by saying you can't do this at this site. Agreed. And the proposed use is reasonable. Again, this is necessary to have located somewhere. It's a successful business. The site is run clean, first class, well done. Uh, probably has less traffic because we're delivering these off site, but it's not like fuel deliveries where obviously as winter comes, there's tons of traffic trips here with big trucks. So I think it's gonna be a reasonable use and hopefully the board sees fit to grant the relief so that Mr. Libri can continue running a successful business in Merrimack. You have a question? No. Oh. All right, thank you. Any questions from the board? I have a comment, but not a question. The same thing. Okay, comment. First of all, it's good to see you back, Mr. Libri. Thank you. Um, I'm for this petition, and the reason I'm saying is because he's done substantial work. It is a con first of all that there's a bunch of contractors up and down that road, um, including Libri Landscaping, which is right next door. Um, and he took what a pink house really beautified that if you want to see what this will eventually look like yeah. at least the, the the general front facade will look similar to what we have next door so, yeah so and it, it, like i said it was a it was a pink house and turned it into a really nice office area he's done a good job with containing the uh the landscaping equipment in the back and making sure that that's not an eyesore or, or and uh it's done a very good job maintaining that property i don't see any reason why he wouldn't do the same with this property um it's a good business so well uh, i mean I, it's good to see you back and thank you i personally uh, i mean i would be uh for this oh I, i'm just because of the different variances we've had related to contractors yards in the past i think that this is very we've got to change the ordinance a bit if there if there's a way to do that because this is just silly. It, it's silly i would I respect you guys so much. I would feel this is so asinine if I were on that side of this conversation. I'd be like, why am I even here? It's just silly. But we, I think we're all in agreement. It, it really is. Because, you know, I would much rather have this than, than propane tanks that don't need a variant. So, but I'll go ahead and open it to the public. Um, is there anyone that's looking to speak in favor? Yeah, good evening again. Bill Boyd, 139 Joppa Road. Uh, Mr. Chairman, through you to the board members, I support the petition. I believe that the applicant has met the prongs reliant to meet the uh, progress of the petition. But I also wanted to amplify board member Dwyer's uh, comments because those were going to be my comments. Mr. Lippery took, took, took a very dilapidated pink, house. pink <laughs> looking house with the dust bowl in front. And uh, it's it's a joy when you drive down DW Highway heading south to see the, the line of green afterwards. And I can only anticipate that uh, should the petition be approved, that that greenage from Mr. Labrie's property, the landscaping is going to continue through at the uh, at the drop one portable site as well. So I urge the board to act favorably on the petition. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Ron Ketchy. I live at Six Brookside Drive. Chairman, board, thank you for letting me say a few words in support of this petition. I do work for Brian, and since I've been there, I've seen nothing but improvements, positive. Uh, he's very conscientious. He's neighborhood conscious. He takes care of his customers, especially his crews. He's safety-minded. He's made that property a showplace. There's no unfailing, like, aromas or anything. The product is properly stored. He upgrades his equipment. I mean, I've seen nothing but positive, and I'm a, and I'm proud to be an employee at the company because I feel comfortable working there. I'm out on the road all the time, and I am, I'm a service tech. I take care of the porta boys, and he's very conscientious and wants to know how are things going. He does one on one with you if you need to, but I'll tell you one thing: if anybody has uh, neighbors. They'd be really satisfied to have an employee, an employee like Brian, his business right there with them. The neighbors wouldn't be nothing but positive on both sides. So thank you. I hope you approve the petition. Thank you so much. Is there anyone else looking to speak in favor of this petition? Is there anyone looking to speak against this petition? All right. I will close the public. 
I'd like to make a motion that the board finds the petitioner's responses to the statutory criteria are sufficient, proved each criterion is met, and the board adopts the petitioner's responses as the board's findings of fact, and further to grant the variance under section 2.02.3 of the zoning ordinance to permit a contractor's yard in the C2 general commercial district where the use is not permitted subject to the following condition the petitioner shall obtain approval from the planning board for proposed contractor's yard all right motion made by patrick seconded by chuck all in favor aye all right five zero zero passes thank you so all. thank you i appreciate thank your you. time tonight thank you thank you for your patience thank you also there's a 30-day appeal window though i don't think that's gonna happen All right. All right. Yeah. Michael and Carol Ann Karen, petitioner owner, variance under section 2.02.1. 1.c 2d to permit a detached accessory dwelling unit on a lot with 20,691 square feet whereas at least 125,000 square feet of lot area is required parcels located 12 Collins Ave in the r1 residential by soils aquifer conservation elderly housing overlay districts tax map 6d lot 564 case cba 2023-18 so my name is michael karen this is my wife i Karen. Think your mic is on bright green now it is better yep better. all right so my name is michael karen this is my wife carol ann um the building where this accessory dwelling unit would be located uh, was actually built as a garage and workshop with a bonus area above it the original intent was we had no intent for the space above it it was just if we didn't build it when we built the space we wouldn't have added on later it would have been too expensive to add that space later um so the turning it into an accessory dwelling unit was a found use for the space that we already had so given that kind of preamble i'll address your your points okay. um granting the variance would not be contrary mike would you yes, pull the mic a little bit closer to yes, you yes i apologize i'm rather soft spoken yes thank you <laughs> granting the variance would not be contract contrary to the public interest because existing building because it is already an existing building with existing parking there's no additional building being done here there's no additional parking being asked for we're going to use the exact same space uh, that we already have all right any questions from the board all right please continue the spirit of the ordinance is observed because uh, again it's a the existing building with no additional traffic the occupant uh, for the accessory accessory dwelling unit is uh, our family member uh, the intent is to give her a separate dwelling space where she can have her own um, privacy and and a little more independence from uh, living at home all right any questions from the board how many, be how many bedrooms does it have? It's just a single bedroom. It's a studio style area. Efficiency as well. Plumbed out. It's going to be plumbed out with efficiencies as far as bathroom and yes. kitchen, all those ones. Yep. What's the square footage of the of the ADU? So I think we it came in at just over a thousand square feet, and I okay. we have an additional one thousand one hundred twenty oh. square feet. Yes, if I was just a little bit more literate, I would have seen that actually. That's, that's, the, <laughs> that's, that's the next. That's, one. that's, that's the next one. I... Well, we, yeah, he brought up a good point. Yeah, that's the exterior measurements of the building, not Correct. the interior square feet. Oh, the, the thousand square feet. The one thousand one hundred twenty is taken from the exterior measurements of the oh, building. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I, I'm sorry. Were there any questions on the, the oh, second? So I think we're good. Please continue. Uh, granting the variance would do substantial justice. Um, again, it's giving an adult 
child of ours a opportunity to become more independent and to have their own space. Um, it's not adding another person who's not a member of the family, somebody who hasn't already been living in the in the space or in the uh, property. Um, we're not looking to make any money off from this. This is just to give somebody a space to have some independence. Absolutely. Any questions from the board? Right, please continue. And granting the variance would not diminish the values of surrounding properties. Uh, again, the building was already built and permitted. The whole thing's up and running long before we ever made the decision to try and turn the uh, bonus area above the garage workshop into an accessory dwelling unit. Um, from the surrounding property point of view, there is no change to anything. Um, everything that's been done is behind closed doors and not visible to anybody in the neighborhood. All right, any questions from the board? No. All right, please continue. Uh, and then the unnecessary hardship. Um, the, the variance is that we, because it's a detached unit, we need the variance um, to, to have this be a accessory dwelling unit. Um, when we began the work, uh, just refinishing it, we weren't aware that there was going to be a problem with the fact that it was detached, causing us to need this variance, and that's why we're here tonight to, to request this variance. Okay. And the uh, B proposed and the use B is reasonable? proposed use of the reason is reasonable. Um, again, we aren't making any changes to the... Um, footprint of the buildings on the property, uh, the parking, the sewage load, the utility usage. Um, it's the same three people that have been living at that property. It's just in another apartment for one of those people. All right, thank you. Are there any questions at all from the board regarding anything in this petition? With this being a separate building, this is over the garage, right? This is over the garage right. workshop, yes. So what is the means of ingress and egress? So when we, when we built the uh, space, we, I didn't want to have um, direct access through the back door into my shop. So we had always had a hallway leading to a stairway going up to that area. Um, and so there is a back door to the garage that leads into a stairwell that leads to the accessory dwelling unit. is a question for staff is it i mean where this is above the garage mm -hmm. is this considered an adu or an apartment it would be an adu because it's um accessory to the use of the primary house dwelling but it's over the garage not the primary house yep so it would still be an adu it's just detached instead okay. of attached i believe separated or, utilities yeah. is what differentiates yep. yep that as well okay Thank you. Um, all right. Any other questions from the board? All right. I'll go ahead and open this to the public. Is there anyone that's looking to speak in favor of this petition? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Bill Boyd, 139 Joppa Road. I'm not looking to make this habit forming, but to offer an anecdote to amplify the applicant's petition before the plane board several years ago. We had two ADU, ADU petitions that were presented. Uh, one was on property on Landown Way, where it seeked to use roughly about a thousand square feet over an, over an existing garage, and that was to provide a bedroom for the uh, for the the wife's mother to be able to live there while she was uh, being treated down in Boston for medical ailments. So, there's, there, from my standpoint, uh, there's certainly a precedent for for this type of use. So, I certainly hope that the board would act favorably on the petition. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone else that's looking to speak in favor of this petition? All right. Is anyone looking to speak against this petition? All right. If you want to go ahead and uh, grab the microphone and uh, state your name and where you reside. John Marks, 15 Collins Ave. Okay. Uh, I've been a resident at uh, 15 Collins Ave for since uh, the 70s. And... 
I'm speaking against this, not specifically for myself, but for the character of the neighborhood. The, uh, the Brick Mill Park is what was originally built. There are now several uh, houses with large structures next to them. And I'm concerned that the, uh, right now the upper floor of, of the uh, existing garage workshop <clears throat> is be will become residential. And there's nothing to prevent the lower level from becoming residential as well. When the property uh, changes hands, right now it's going to be for a family member. But when this property changes hands, now you're going to have uh, two, uh, two residences that you can lease out on that land. And right, well, we say no, but things change over time. They would, but they'd have to, in order to do that, they'd be right back in front of us. So they'd be I, back I in front of you because I'm 80 years old. <laughs> I, I expected that my, my good neighbors, and I do consider them good neighbors, that they'll be here for longer than I'm going to be there. Uh, the other uh, point uh, I want to make is this isn't like having an attached garage and then re retrofitting it for an in-law apartment or, or uh, something like that. This is a this is a separate building, and the uh, the square footage the square footage for uh, for this building or for a detached building this does not meet the requirements for that, and it misses by it being only one fifth of the area required for the. Uh, uh for a detached residential so i i just wish that that the board would take that into consideration okay and again if it, if it makes you feel any better then adu is not an apartment they are not the same use because um, they'll have shared adus have shared utilities so in order to have an apartment you have to have separated utilities so it's a very different use case so and if your concern is that they would sell this house and somebody else would buy it and turn it into apartments, they can't do that. They have to come back here. So just so you're aware, an ADU is, it's yeah, just that it's designed to be an in-law apartment. Yeah. You couldn't do that in a single family zone period. Right. You couldn't do that, turn it into three units in a single family zone. That would never pass. You couldn't put two ADUs, rental units in there because you're a single an, family. Yeah, okay. for, for an ADU, sir, for an ADU, you only can add one unit, not two, <laughs> and it has to be occupied by a familiar, member of the family. Right. Okay? That's in our uh, ADU code. It doesn't have to be a member of the family. It could be anyone. Um, it just, some the primary, or one of the units has to be owner-occupied. Right. Meaning, so if I own the house, I would have to occupy either that ADU or the primary dwelling. Correct. It doesn't have to be a family member. Um, no, she's right. It, I, I think that that and wording I, changed. Yeah, and I think that addresses that? some of his concern about um, having it be like two separate owners. It can't can't happen. It can't be condoed. Um, that's one of the requirements for them. And then also. Um, the sizing is the next variance for the size of the total unit itself. It can't exceed over a thousand feet. They're asking for a thousand one hundred and twenty. Um, that's the next zone um, variance, but they wouldn't be allowed to convert that downstairs into a unit um, just because it's simply too big. And then I don't. They would have to again, like they said, would have to come before the board. Yeah, I hope that addresses Absolutely. your Thank concerns. You. If you don't mind, I like to ask a question. Sure. This means the buildings are going to remain just like they are. You need to identify yourself first, please. Oh, excuse me, I'm Jean Marks, uh, 15 Collins Avenue. No difference in the front or two door. Nothing is going to change. It's going to, there's going to have to be some kind of an entrance to this place. The entrance is on the back side. 
already and existing. And it's already existing. It's an existing entrance already. Yeah, so there's, there's not going to be any structural changes that you'll notice it's from outside. And the, the access to the upstairs the is inside. On the, on the side of the house? No, it's inside. Everything is inside. There's one door going into the building, and the access to upstairs is a stairwell inside the building. Inside the garage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So everything remains the same. Even the, the two existing driveways will re remain the same. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone else that's looking to speak against this particular petition? All right. I will go ahead and close the public and entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion that the board finds the petitioner's response to the statutory criteria are sufficient, proved each criteria is meant, and the board adopts the petitioner's responses as the board's findings of fact, and further to grant the variance under section 2.02.C, 2.2D of the zoning ordinance to permit a detached uh, accessory dwelling unit on a lot with 29,691 square feet, whereas at least 125,000 square feet of lot area is required. Uh, subject to the following conditions, petitioner shall obtain the associated variance for the ADU size, and uh, the petitioner shall obtain conditional use permit approval from the planning board for the proposed detached ADU. Second. Does Second. Or you did? Yeah, I think Lynn beat you. Yeah, she so, beat you. Okay. <laughs> Motion made by Patrick, seconded by Lynn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Five zero zero. So again, there's a 30-day window where somebody could um, try to appeal this decision. Understood. Just so you're aware. Uh, but otherwise, congratulations and good luck. And we have uh, the second. Oh, they got the second one there. Too. You know what? We just I didn't. We just addressed this to us. <laughs> you're fine. I apologize. You're fine. No worries. I promise you, I'm with the program tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, okay. as, as noted, I'm sorry, you need to read it. Oh, yeah, I, have, I do have to read in the <laughs> petition. So, uh, variance under section 2.02.1C2C of uh, to allow a detached accessory dwelling unit with 1,120 square feet of living space, whereas a maximum of 1,000 square feet of living space is permitted. Parcels located at 12 Collins Ave and the R1 residential by soils, aquifer conservation, and elderly housing overlay districts. Tax map 6D, lot 564, case ZBA 2023-21. All right, so uh, as pointed out, the square footage that is recorded is based on the exterior measurements of the, of the building. Um, obviously, there's a stairwell uh, that needs to be, that it's a straight shot from the ground floor to the upper floor um, because I use the half of the ground floor as a shop. I have elevated ceilings, so that's actually quite a long staircase and eats up quite a bit of the usable square footage in the accessory dwelling unit. Um, I'm not sure that that makes any difference at all to your square footage calculations, but we are just barely over the 1,000 square foot limit. And um, if you take into account the the stairwell that is unusable as living space it definitely comes under the 1000 that's how close we are to the to the limit um, so granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest because uh, the building was previously permitted and the second floor was permitted as a rec room uh, we have a we've added a laundry room a galley kitchen and interior walls to make the family member apartment uh, there are again no exterior changes or additional parking or traffic for the for the space. All right. Any questions from the board? I think since you've already gone over this with the first petition, you can feel just free to just roll read it all right in. through them. That's yeah. fine. The spirit of ordinance is observed because the existing building again has no brings no additional traffic. Uh, the second floor is one living area, uh, very studio style. Uh, the occupant is a family member. Uh, the available space happened to be over a thousand square feet. It wasn't an intentional plan to subvert some square footage regulations. It just ends up, that's how the measurements worked out. We aren't using any more septic. We're using the same septic that we've always used, same load, same people. Uh, so we believe the spirit of the ordinance is observed. 
Granting the, the variance uh, would do substantial justice because it gives our family member who has medical issues and needs the security of having family nearby that she can fall back on if she has a problem, uh, a place to stay, and it gives her more independence. So as an adult, she can live a more adult lifestyle while still having family nearby to help her with any medical conditions that she may have to deal with. Um, Granting the variance would not diminish the values of the surrounding properties. Again, we are not making any changes to the exteriors of the buildings, the same exteriors of the buildings, the same driveways, the same use of the property as it has always been. It's just that we will have uh, the, the second story will be livable by somebody. Uh, and then finally, the unnecessary hardship. Um, As I pointed out, we are over 1,000 square feet. If you just take the strict exterior dimensions into account, if you subtract out the unusable spaces due to interior walls and uh, stairways, uh, we fall just below the 1,000 square foot limitation. Um, but again, not a, a zoning board member or, or expert in such things. So I was ignorant as to how such things were measured and therefore are, am seeking this variance. Uh, the proposed use is reasonable. Again, we aren't making any changes to the use of the property, the load of the property, the amount of traffic coming to and from the property, um, and it will be in use by a family member as their primary dwelling, and we will be using the other, uh, other unit as our primary dwelling. All right, thank you. Any questions at all regarding this petition from the board? All right, I'll go ahead and open this up. Is there anyone uh, looking to speak in favor of this petition? Is there anyone looking to speak against this petition? I'll go ahead and close the public. I entertain a motion. I make a motion that the board finds the petitioner's responses to the statutory criteria sufficient proof. Each criterion is met, and the board adopts the petitioner's responses as the board's finding of fact. And further, to grant the variance <laughs> under section 2.02.1.C2. C of the zoning ordinance permit zoning ordinance to permit a detached accessory dwelling unit with 11 1120 square feet of living space whereas the maximum 1000 square feet of living space is permitted subject to the following condition the petitioner shall obtain a conditional use permit approval from the planning board for the proposed detached ad Second. All right. Motion made by Patrick. Seconded by Lynn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Five zero zero. So this passes as well. And what I was trying to say earlier now, uh, you have a 30 day window where if you do any work, somebody could appeal it. But just so you know, I, I would like to commend you both for doing this. It's important for adults or adult age people to have their own independent space with the support of family close by. So I commend you for doing this. Thank, Thank you. Decision. Thank you. Agreed. Have a wonderful night. Thank you. Take care. We're getting there. Okay, so the next petition is Bill Norling, petitioner in Merrimack Memorial Post 98, owner, variance under section 17.09.3 to permit a non-residential electronic graphic display sign in the R residential district where not permitted. Parcels located at 43 Wabuzik Lake Road in the R4 residential by soils. Aquifer conservation, elderly housing overlay, and town center overlay districts, tax map 5D-3, lot 1, KCBA 2023-20. Good evening. Hi. I'm going to let Ed take the reins here. He's our signed contractor. He's uh, very familiar with this process. I am not at all. <laughs> okay. Could I just ask you both to identify yourselves on? I am Bill Norling. Okay. Uh, representing Post 98. All right. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ed Kenny. I'm with Watchfire Signs um, out of Manchester, New Hampshire. All right, thank you. 
And if uh, you could tell us a little bit about what you're looking to do. Sure. I uh, I did not bring my own easel, so hold this up. Matt's got one behind you. Oh, yeah. I had easel and me. Sorry, this is my first rodeo. I find that hard to believe. You got that? <laughs> um, so what you see here is uh, just some, a layout of the existing signage and the new proposed signage. So um, over here you see the existing signage at the American Legion. Uh, I found out tonight that it was installed in 1972. Um, so it's um consists of an identity cabinet that's 12 square feet a manual reader board that is just over 15 square feet a flag mounted sign around six square feet uh, a small hanging square that's faded uh which is about four square feet so the in total square footage of the signage is just over 37 square feet um it's dated it's in a state of disrepair um it's disjointed there's no flow the Legion sign uh, hangs on chains and blows in the wind. The, um, the reader board uh, is faded. They've lost letters. So if you want to put an E in there, you have to turn a three backwards and slide it in. Um, so there's just no overall um, cohesion to the sign. It's in disrepair and it needs to be replaced. So uh, the proposed signage, uh, we're proposing an electronic message center. Um, that would be uh, 21 square foot, so viewable area of three foot by seven foot. <clears throat> um, a small um, uh, identity cabinet that's um, 16 inches by 87 inches, so just under 10 square feet. Um, when you include the small reveal spacer there, um, its uh, total square footage is just under 32 square feet. So um, it's actually a reduction in the overall square footage. Um, it's updated, it's current, it's consistent with other signage in the zoning district uh, and in the area. Um, <clears throat> and it utilizes the uh, most up-to-date technology. So um, electronic message center versus a changeable copy board. Um, so that's the, the overall scope of the project. I just wanna let you know, you had me at turning a three backwards to make an E. <laughs> We've all met there. Height wise, how does this sign compare with what's there now? Uh, it's going to be very similar as far as the existing height, um, yep. and it conforms. So, being in the residential district, um, it, the proposed signage conforms to uh, the sign ordinance mm -hmm. for almost every other uh, mm -hmm. district. Um, you know, uh, it's, uh, I would say it's comparable to the police station, which is right down the street. Um, but it's going to be roughly the same place or the same height that those are yeah. there now. That's what, that yep. was the question. Thank you. Sorry. Is it going to be lit on both sides? Yes, yeah, so it'll be a double-sided sign. Okay. So, obviously, I mean, where the Legion is, I mean, you got the high school, you got a dentist office, I mean, you got there. On the other side, you, will you be able to see it from the other side of the bridge? Nope. So, I... Um, I did a drive-by, you know, knowing it's in a residential neighborhood and preparing myself for tonight's meeting. I wanted to make sure, you know, um, if it was going to be in direct view of a, 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 a resident, you know, I wanted to be prepared for that. Um, but the closest resident is well over 500 feet. It was actually 0.3 miles uh, away on the other side of the bridge. Mm -hmm. We can go up and come down. There's no resident that has either direct or indirect viewing of either side of the side. Okay. All right, so if you could, um, criteria, please go through the criteria. Sure. Yeah. So now I don't know which one to speak into. Um, uh, granting variance would not be contrary to public interest. Um, the parcel in question isn't a residential zone, but as I mentioned, there are no residential abutters, no um, no residences, no neighborhoods with direct or indirect. Uh, 
viewing of the sign. Um, it's similar in look and feel to existing sign in the area, which I will I'll, can show after. Um, and it is, uh, in regards to public interest, um, the Legion is a community-based organization. It's run by veterans. You know, they're known for their humanitarian work. Um, it, it, it is mainly going to benefit the public. So advertising community events, uh, things like the ball field, which is available for use, um, uh, either for rent or at no cost, um, you know, to members and non-members, which the community may or may not be aware of. So it's, it is a benefit to the community. It's, it's in no, um, no way contrary to the public interest. Um, the spirit of the ordinance is observed. Um, these, as I mentioned, the signage will conform to basically every code uh, that uh, Merrimack has for digital signage. So uh, minimum hold times will be observed. Uh, automatic dimming is observed. Uh, On-off times, um, brightness levels, um, no blinking, flashing, scrolling in between messages. So. Um, it is going to be 100% manufactured and run um, in compliance with the ordinance if it was in any other zone. Um, and just to paraphrase what Chuck said earlier, if I can call it Chuck, um, uh, the ordinance is written to provide the best community out there and what uh, Merrimack uh, wants to accomplish. Um, you know, there is no better example of community than what these folks do over here. Um, and just, you know, as far as maximizing land use, like I mentioned, you know, uh, getting the word out to the community that, hey, we have facilities that you can use, ball fields you can use, we have function rooms available. Um, you know, it's it's basically the letter of the law for the for that ordinance. So. Um, it does substantial justice because um, it allows the Legion to update signage that is in serious disrepair and needs to be replaced anyway. Um, it allows them to use the newest technology out there as far as um, electronically changeable messages versus the old reader boards. Uh, it allows them to compete with similar businesses. So, you know, the VFW for one, you know, a like organization, they're able to utilize digital messaging. They're in a, you know, um, in a commercial uh, commercially zoned area, um, but it does kind of level the playing field. Um, so there is justice there. Um, granting the variance does not diminish the value of surrounding properties. Um, updated, better looking signage will never diminish your property value. There's no residences that are going to be affected by a commercial, you know, a sign that looks a little bit more commercial. Um, if anything, it's only going to increase um, property values in the area because it's going to replace a dilapidated uh, dilapidated sign with something that's current and actually looks nice. Um, uh, owing to special conditions of the property to distinguish it from other properties in the area. So um, it's a unique property where it's a social club. Um, it's all about community engagement. They're not a retail business. They're not a restaurant. Um, so it's a, you know, a unique set of circumstances that these guys operate under. Um, um, and again, there's no residential dwellings uh, within the viewing, dis uh, viewing distance, so the provision where it's residential shouldn't uh, affect it as much. Um, the proposed use is a reasonable one. Um, it's in line with other signage in the area. So uh, where EMCs are allowed in Merrimack, just not in this area, um, it's reasonable to request one. And if you look at my other examples here, um, Merrimack PD is two parcels over. So it's basically one neighbor over. Um, the signage at Merrimack Police is almost identical in size, uh, shape, and aspect to the proposed signage. Um, it's just flip-flopped where Merrimack is a three foot by seven foot header cabinet with a 18, 19 inch by 81 inch EMC. Um, 
is basically flip-flop. So they'll have a smaller header cabinet uh, or identity cabinet underneath with a, a EMC uh, three foot by seven foot, basically the same size as the police station. Um, the public library is right down the road. They have a four by eight, uh, 32 square foot electronic passive center on the side of the building. It was mentioned earlier that it's been run with no complaints from many of the neighbors. Um, the high school has similar signage, uh, a two by eight message center with a three by eight uh, identity cabinet on top. Um, and there's a Innovation Spa, which is on uh, 228 Nanticook Road, um, which is residential. I actually thought it was in Amherst, but found out it's still in Merrimack. Um, they have a one foot by eight foot EMC on the side of the building with um, internally illuminated channel letters on two sides of the building. Um, so it's a reasonable request because it's similar to other signage in the area where variances in the same scope have been granted. We did the BFW not too long ago, I believe. Yeah, yeah, and I believe they had to get a variance due to setback yep. as well, so. Yeah, anytime someone says they want to replace those uh, hanging letter signs, those well, things are terrible. You're, you're <laughs> also doing subjunctive justice, which I mentioned they, we were talking about this earlier. I think the average age of membership there is 77 years old. 70, yeah. So uh, to change that copy, you know, you're relying on someone to climb a ladder. Could be inclement weather. It could be snow. You know, that's um, what grandkids are for. What's that? That's what grandkids are for. <laughs> right. So then you need volunteers who you have to bribe. Um, so you know, uh, having the most up to date technology. You know, not only does it look nice and clean, but it is much safer for anybody else who's uh, going to be changing the messages. Yeah, and you don't have bored teenagers on a weekend night changing the letters on you. That's right. 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 Yeah. Right. <laughs> Take it, you were one. I was a restaurant manager, so I've dealt with those letter signs. And uh, I, as a matter of fact, I, I got a little bit of a PTSD here reading this. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you put the message up that says it's too cold out, just stop inside. <laughs> It, it, it's it's more when they're too low to the ground and you know you you come in on a monday morning you're like what happened here yeah. who did that you do 52 pickup and you walk around picking up all the letters that blew off over the yep. weekend oh that too that yeah. too when they break and then you have the backwards three like you said um all right so with that being said any questions from the board regarding this petition no uh all right so what i'll go ahead and do is open this to the public is there anyone that's looking to speak in favor of this petition Never Whoops. give a politician an opportunity to speak. That's okay. That's okay. I should have known he was coming. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, through you uh, to the members of the uh, the board. Again, my name is Bill Boyd, 139 Joppa Road, and I stand in support of the Legion's petition. Um, first off, uh, I, the, the VFW set the standard. They have a similar sign up down on DW Highway, which I think has, has improved. Um, their, their club, their amenity down there, so I would anticipate that having the same effect here. Um, anecdotally, um, it's kind of interesting. Several years ago, when I spoke before the ZBA regarding cell towers here in New Hampshire, there was a cell tower proposed next to my house. I had uh, done some research, and there are 13 cell towers in the town of Merrimack, 12 which are on commercial property. One is on residential, and it's the Legion. And the ZBA saw fit, um, I want to say it was 2009, 2010, to approve the petition for a non-residential use of putting the cell tower. I think it's generally accepted that the Legion is a part of, is a part of the center of town and how the center of town uh, generally is considered to be more commercial than residential. Um, so I don't see um, the sign having any type of a negative impact to the residential ne neighborhood per se. Um, coming over Babusa Lake Road, um, the Legion, the high school, the police department serves as a, as, and the town hall serves as a wonderful, wonderful gateway uh, in, into our community. And I think what the Legion is choosing to do is uh, indicative of contributing to, to commerce in, in the town. The one fly that I would put in the ointment, I'd be remiss, um, being a member of Public Works and Highways up in the New Hampshire House, we are going to be widening the FEA return pike. 
and Babusik Lake Road is part of that expansion. They're going to be elongating that road, and I believe they're going to be widening it just a little bit. So I would hope, or I would encourage the Legion um, to consider working with the New Hampshire DMT so that when the construction comes through, when that bridge is expanded, that there's no impact to the sign, that the sign is in the location where it needs to be. So I just don't mean to put the fly in the ointment, but I, I felt obligated to provide that testimony to the board. In, in conclusion, I support the application and urge favorable consideration of the petition. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh. Yeah, oh. Please continue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Tim McGue, Five Barrows Landing again. Here to support this petition as well. I was I reminded the other, other day how much the Legion uh, does for the community and that we do need to grant them parity with the VFW. I drive by the VFW all, all, all the time uh, heading back to Bowers Landing. And I can't tell you how many times I've been to the Legion for a softball tournament in, in 30 years in, in town uh, or for a meat raffle. And, and, you know, I tend to miss those uh, because of the signage. So this, this type of sign would be fantastic and a great improvement. And you asked earlier about the billboard signage, and I've been in marketing one way or the other for about 20 years and I've had a lot of occasions to investigate value in signage and digital signs are, as you can tell by the number of requests you get and the amount of discussion, they're the way to go. Um, uh, there are different sizes and standard sizes uh, for billboards, by the way. Uh, oh, there are. You talked about, uh, I think you mentioned 672 square feet. I actually don't know the dimensions. I think that was what they were bringing up. But I, I remember last time we looked into billboards, there was a very specific dimension that was used for advertising. So that's people the big want, one. Yeah. yeah, that's the big one. 672. It's, I think it's 14 by 48. And that's usually they call that a bulletin. That's the gigantic one that that's a that's a billboard. Yeah. And those are really, really effective. And I'm sure the gentleman from the sign company knows it even better than I do. But I know that from looking into it because that's the standard size. There's smaller ones that are posters and juniors or junior posters and other, but the, and there I think about 200 and then less than 100. So the one that you kindly approved for uh, Mr. Morgan was um, sort of in the middle, 500, I think it's around 500 oh, okay. square feet, um, thereabouts. So smaller than the, the generally accepted biggest billboard. I mean, there actually are some bigger, but the generally accepted biggest billboard it's about 672, and if I memory serves, it's about 14 by 48, and I'm sure the gentleman from the sign company knows. Um, I'm sure he's an expert judging by uh, his fantastically done you're, yellow you're truck that I saw driving. <laughs> Am I spot on? Spot on. Uh, well, I've paid for a couple of them in my time. But anyways, <laughs> um, whatever we can do to support the, uh, the Legion is the right thing to do in this case. And, uh, you know, saw him at the uh, Memorial Day parade, and then we went to the VFW, and I saw their sign. And then I saw them on the agenda, and I thought this is worth hanging around to throw in a, a word of support for them because they're longtime friends. So, oh, I'll, I'll so, be honest. I've been asking the question to myself every time I drove by. I'm like, when are they going to catch up to the VFW? Yeah, <laughs> uh, you, you, year, years ago at the Nashville Fishing Game, uh, I was on the board of trustees, just elected the board of trustees, and I asked for nine hundred dollars for a sandblasted sign. Uh, from Hammer and Sons, and they thought I was crazy. It was 1990 something, and it was 900 bucks, and that was a lot of money. And uh, I installed it, uh, or had it installed, and it was stolen the next day. <laughs> and we had just barely notified the insurance company. So they did replace it, thankfully. So whatever you do, insure it by the insurance policy. <laughs> but anyway, support the petition. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Dick Peterson, uh, 249 Riverbank Road, Manchester. I've been the commander over at the Legion for many years and now finance. The roadway discussion. We uh, voted this in two and a half years ago. It took Bill many trips, as you understand, to the Department of Transportation to find out about the roadway before we did any, any construction. We do have the plans. And all this stuff, the roadway is going to be on the south side. But when you come over Babusik Lake Road, you're going to be swinging left because you're going from Babusik Lake Road towards town. So that's why it's important for us to make sure that sign is a little bit larger 
So someone's not looking like this when they're coming down a hill, because if you come down a hill and barren left, that's one of our concerns. And I, for one, had a car chase me off the ladder there, chasing that sign, so I can attest to that. <laughs> but uh, a lot of things, uh, we're very, very involved in the town. We just did the seniors' high school cleanup, 120 kids we fed last week. Uh, senior, senior citizens come to me, how come we didn't know about that? Well, hopefully we can be able to do that for them, to make these announcements. You know, when someone comes home from a service, whether well, they've been deployed or from basic training, people ask us to put a sign up. Well, it's doggone hard to go out there and do that with a, on a stepladder. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Kevin Lofton, 18 Harwich. I'm the commander over at the American Legion. And I'm in support of this sign and asking you to support it too. It's going to give us a new face. Right now, you drive by and you wonder if anybody goes in there with the sign the way it is, or, or you, you don't know what's going on. And that sign will is a game changer, and it's also a start for us in our remodeling and redoing over there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else looking to speak in favor of this petition? Anyone looking to speak against this petition? I'll go ahead and close the public. Do I hear a motion? Yeah, Mr. Mr. Chairman, <laughs> one privilege, please. If I may. Sure. I'm a post-war baby, generally called boomers these days. This was a small community uh, and a number of the residents here marched off in the Second World War, the First World War for that matter. I know Frank Hazeltine was in the First World War. He's got his name carved on the Civil War monument across the street. My father spent seven years at sea, participated in the invasion of Japan. Everybody we knew had a veteran. It was a small town. Everybody was a veteran. And they began to try to build a better community and a better life under that mantle of the brotherhood of veterans. And sometimes I think that's what's missing today. So I marched off in 1968 to the Republic of Vietnam, spent a whole year up in the I Corps. I am not a member of the Legion but I am a member of the Brotherhood. And it is a very special thing. It's not just what they do in this community that they call theirs. It is the Brotherhood first and foremost that is burned into our psyche from the experiences that we had <laughs> serving, dutifully serving, the call of our country. And so the Legion is not just another place that needs another sign. God, I remember when they dragged that old schoolhouse over there and uh, they had meetings in there for a while, a little tiny one-room schoolhouse from over in South Merrimack. So yeah, they were there a long time before uh, anybody else built up around them. They're the plank owners of that piece of land over there. And um, they've done well to build up a program, build up uh, a building and, and offering services, but they have built up the brotherhood. And for that, I will be eternally grateful. And I would like to have the privilege of making a motion. Please. I make a motion that the board finds the petitioner's responses to the statutory criteria are sufficient, proved each criterion is met, and the board adopts the petitioner's responses as the board's finding of fact, and further, to grant the variance under section 17.09.3 to permit a non-residential sign 31.9 square feet in size, whereas a maximum of six square feet is permitted.
Second. Okay. If I can speak to my motion now. Motion made by Chuck, seconded by Lynn. I, as the town historian and the vice president of the Historical Society, I would like to ask, should you receive a favorable commitment from the Zoning Board of Adjustment, that you donate your old sign to the Historical Society? Absolutely. Motion made. You, would you like the poll also? <laughs> <laughs> Just keep the letter sign. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, five zero zero. Motion passes. Don't go anywhere. And now on to the variance under section seventeen point oh nine point three to permit a non-residential sign thirty one point nine square feet in size, whereas a maximum maximum of six square feet is permitted. Parcels located at 43 Vavusic Lake Road in the R4 residential by soils, aquifer conservation, elderly housing overlay, and town center overlay districts. Tax map 5D 3, lot 1, KCBA 2023 19. I uh, I won't rehash everything that we've already talked about in the essence of time. So um, as I mentioned, you the the existing signage is right around 34 square feet. Um, the a non-residential sign in a residential sit district uh, is limited to six square feet. For reference, uh, that is six square feet. So um, the reduction of about 80 percent uh, of their signage. So um you know, it's not contrary to the public interest because um as discussed uh the signage is going to be used to um promote community events as well as the the center and you need the additional square footage to be able to do that uh the spirit or the ordinance is observed um again uh, even though they're in a residential district there is no Residence is in direct viewing area who are going to be affected by having a larger sign and it is in uh, parallel with uh, other signage in the area. Um, uh, does sub substantial justice because uh, they're going to be able to do everything that we've already talked about as far as advertising community events um, and no more climbing ladders to change changeable copy boards. Um, on a much smaller sign if they were held to the letter of the law at six square feet. Um, it does not diminish the values surrounding properties because it is updated signage. Uh, the square footage really has no bearing on any property values in the area. Uh, no one's going to be affected. Um, and unnecessary hardship, if they were held to the letter of the law at six square feet, they really have, it's almost of no use uh, for a business to have six, six square feet of uh, square feet of sign. So we do have to step through the criteria, but you can definitely, I said, so we do still have technically step through each of the criteria. Okay. Just did. Just did. I, okay. We did. All right. <laughs> I'm still here. I promise you. <laughs> that was the the much abbreviated version. I know. I know. I just I was waiting to hear for the. That's okay. Um, Moving right along. Yeah. Uh, so any questions from the board then? All right. I will go ahead and open this to the public. Is there anyone that would like to speak in favor of this particular petition? Anyone that would like to speak against this particular petition? I will close the public. Do I hear a motion? I make a motion that the board finds the petitioner's response to the statutory criteria are sufficient provided each criterion is met and the board adopts the petitioner's responses as the board's finding of fact and further to grant the variance under section 17.09.3 uh, to permit a non-residential sign 31.9 square feet in size whereas, maximums, uh, whereas maximum of six square feet is permitted. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, five zero zero. Motion passes, and uh, 
Just as a reminder, you have a, a 30 day window for the VFW to, I mean, somebody to come and appeal your. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long night. Probably, yeah. Uh, thank you guys very right, much for everything that you much. do. I think this is going to put the whole thing to bed. Yeah, I think we did. But the, yes, because when they added the trailers to the site plan, it turned out they were encroaching on the wetlands. Yeah. I know, I know. But yeah. All right, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and read this in. It's going to be a slam dunk. S.J. Torres, petitioner, and Orrin H. Connell, tr family trust owner, variance under section 2.02.7.A.6, to allow two storage container structures, ground signs to remain 18 feet from a jurisdictional wetland, whereas 40 feet is required. Gentlemen, please. Parcels located at 454 DW Highway in the C2 General Commercial and Aquifer Conservation Elderly Housing Overlay and Town Center Overlay Districts, Tax Map 5D-4, Lot 54, KZBA 2023-22. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Matt Peterson with Keach Norsham Associates. Uh, here with me tonight is SJ of Tomahawk Tavern. Um, I'm sure the board knows where we are. We've been in front of you guys a few times here. Uh, 454 Daniel Webster Highway. Apparently, my client is not up to speed on all these reader boards because we just have a very simple, straightforward <laughs> sign here. Yeah, but it's elegant. Yeah, we thought so. Um, as you remember, we were in front of this board in September to ask for these sign variances. I kind of think I could have called it Greg Michael and done an administrative appeal. This is kind of a weird to come back to. If you look at signs, their structures, you approved my signs back then. They haven't moved to where they were, but... We, uh, what happened is that we moved forward after the signs on site with the event planning that he wanted to do for the fundraisers for the school, the high school, and that kind of stuff. So we've actually been working with the fire department, um, planning staff and all that to allow him to do a few events a year on Sundays um, on site. We put a plan together that showed these containers on the site at that point. That's when Robert has said, well, they're within 18 feet of the wetland and they're within the uh, the 25, the 40 foot buffer and then the 25 foot non-impact buffer. So I just wanted this picture here is from 2011. Um, the area in question was used back in the day for the dumpsters and the re, uh, recycling type stuff that was out there. Um, you know, this is what the site had looked like back then. Um, obviously today, this is what it looks like now and is what we had showed you all along at that on the previous one that we had put together. Um, again, I feel like, you know, we're going back and forth in some of the language where a ground sign is a freestanding with a frame, not to a building, but then a sign is a permanent or temporary structure. So when we permitted the sign, we permitted a structure, but it is what it is. Um, I'll just kind of briefly go through what we're doing here by what he's done out here is very similar to what you heard with Charlie beforehand. You've seen the site before and after it, it's there. Um, he's cleaned up, done a lot in the area. This is behind off the main drag. Um, this really could have just turned into a crap area, quite personally, um, over time, if somebody like SJ hadn't come along. So I think it's a nice fit to it here. And I think our criteria outlines why we feel that it meets your zoning requirements to allow the variances for it. Um, just from your first one, I, they're both the same arguments. Um, I'm gonna read them once, I'll say it for the second one kind of deal, but for the first one with 2.02.7.A.6. And this is related to the 40 foot wetland buffer setback. So it must not be contrary to public interest. Granting the variance would not be contrary to public interest. More specifically, the requested variance will not unduly conflict the basic purpose of the relevant zoning provision as it will not, as it will not contribute to pollution degradation, destruction of the wetlands, nor threaten public health, convenience, safety, or welfare. There is no effect on the public because the containers, trailers, intended for beauty and storage, are not expected to negatively impact the adjacent wetlands. If anything, the improvements made to place the containers in this location have had a more positive impact on the wetlands than previous conditions by reducing the likelihood of possible contaminants from snow melt, garbage, runoff flowing towards those wetlands. 
I have no questions. Just, just go just through it. Yeah, yeah. We, since we've already just gone go through this it. with you, just yeah, feel that's free. Right, figure. Um, it is. It must be consistent with the sport, spirit of the ordinance. Spirit of the ordinance can be determined based on the purpose set forth in section of the regulations. In this case, the purpose as defined in section 2.02.72 of the Town of Merrimack Zoning include but are not limited to prevention of structures or uses that would contribute to the pollution of the surface groundwater and prevention of destruction of the wetlands. The current location container trail is an area that was previously disturbed, consists mainly of shrub brush. This area was also previously used for snow storage, trash collection with multiple dumpsters, recycling bins adjacent to pave access ways. The improvements made to this place contain, the improvements made to place the containers in this location have actually had a positive impact, as just previously stated, on the environment when compared to the prior condition. Runoff that was potentially contaminated by snow and garbage would be, would be more harmful to the adjacent wetlands and the container trails with dry goods storage. No portion of the container trails are located within the wetlands themselves. These signed structures are not expected to contribute pollution or destroy adjacent wetlands. Therefore, the spirit of the ordinance is observed. It must result in substantial justice being done. Substantial justice is synonymous with fairness and granting the variance would allow relief of a reasonable request by the applicant while not adversely impacting the general public. Then substantial justice has been done. The existing trains are located in the rear of the parcel. They were painted to make them more decorative for the restaurant patrons who will be utilizing the space for outdoor dining and occasional fundraising events held on site. Additionally, container trails are anticipated used to store temporary events items that are susceptible to poor weather conditions. Improvements to the area were made in order to place the containers in this location. The subject area was previously disturbed, consisting of the shrub brush utilizing for snow and trash. Um, therefore, we believe that substantial justice will be done by granting this variance at this location. Diminished surrounding properties, the current location of tenants does not diminish the value of properties. In fact, placing containers in this location has approved the area. The area was previously disturbed and its condition was less, much less desirable. The shrub brush area was being used for snow storage, trash collection, the container trailers, which are not visible to the abutting properties, were painted to be signs to beautify an otherwise unattractive area. In addition, the improvements in this area have a more positive impact on the environment as runoff adjacent trailers and stored dry goods is favorable to the potential contamination runoff from snow melt and garbage flowing towards wetlands. The smaller woodland buffer still exists between the trailers and the wetlands themselves. No negative impacts to the wetlands are anticipated. And number five, it must be shown that denial will result in unnecessary hardship. There is no substantial relationship between the general purpose of the ordinance and the specific violation being applied for. There is no relationship between the ordinance and the variance being requested because the ordinance was written to protect the wetlands and the container trailers are not expected to impact these wetlands. The container trails are actually an improvement to the previous site conditions as outlined in my 2011 photo shown to the board. And lastly, the pros use the reason one. Pros use the reason one because the container trails are located in this area to provide convenient storage and artwork to an otherwise unattractive area on site. The area had already been disturbed. The wetlands themselves remain protected by the smaller woodland boat that exists. The containers use of the continued use of the container trails expected to approve, not negative impact the wetlands. All right, any questions from the board? All right, I'll go ahead and open to the public. Anyone looking to speak in favor of this petition? Go for it. Very briefly. Very briefly. Tim McHugh, Five Bowers Landing. People come to see these signs and get their picture take in front of them. They're practically an attraction. I mean, I know you can see them. Oh yeah. Uh, but you see, you can also see them all over social media. I mean, they're great looking. So please support the petition and allow them to remain there. And I know you've, uh, I know you know what he's, what uh, SJ is doing for the community and what he's already done. I've been to events there and the barbecue's back on Thursday. So do go get some <laughs> because it's fantastic. So thanks for supporting his application. All right. Thank you. Uh, any any other comments in favor of this petition? He's not going to speak. Oh. Come on. What? <laughs> I sat all night with him. <laughs> Bill Boyd, 139 Sorry. Joppa Road. I echo my previous colleague's comments regarding the application. Um, I strongly urge the board that the applicant has met the four prongs in their petition for for a remedy. And I urge favorable acceptance of the petition because SJ has done an amazing job with that location. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. All right. Anyone looking to speak against this petition? At this point, 
exactly. Um, I'll go ahead and close the public. Uh, do I hear a motion? I make a motion that the board finds the petitioner's response to the statutory criteria sufficient provided the criterion is met and the board adopts the petitioner's responses as the board's findings of fact for it and further to grant the variance under section 2.02.7a.6a to allow two storage container structures slash ground signs to remain 18 feet from a jurisdictional wetland whereas 40 feet is required. Second. All right, much read by Patrick, seconded by Lynn, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, five zero zero, and on to variance under section two point zero two point seven a seven to allow two storage container structures ground signs to remain within the non disturbance wetland buffer area, whereas a twenty five foot buffer is required. Parcels located four fifty four, DW Highway and the C two General Commercial Aquifer Conservation. Elderly Housing Overlay and Town Center Overlay Districts, Tax Map 5D-4, Lot 54, KCBA 2023-23. And I fail to understand what makes this different from the last variance. I'll be That's honest with you. Right. So I, I offer that these are both wetland setbacks for the trailers and that the arguments I submitted on the previous one are the same for this argument as well. The trailers are in the exact same location. Then I will accept all previous testimony for this. Thank you. <laughs> Do it. And I'll go ahead and open the public. This, would anyone like to speak in favor of this petition? Okay. Anyone like to speak against this petition? I will close the public. I'd like to make a motion that the board finds the petitioner's response to the statutory criteria is sufficient, proved each criterion is met, and the board adopts the petitioner's responses as the board's finding of fact and further to grant the variance under section 2.02.78.7 to allow two storage container structures slash ground signs to remain within non-disturbance wetland buffer area where is 25 foot buffer is required. Second. All right, motion made by Patrick, seconded by Lynn. All in favor? Aye. All right, five zero zero. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have, have a wonderful have, evening. We have friends from Friday. Chuck should... Chuck Maurer gave me a tour of the behind the wooden park all the way down to that for that bridge he wanted to redo. I remember that, and I remember you so much. We went down there together, and that was a great speech you gave. You're an important man in this town. Keep sharing this. You almost made me cry when you said that. It's great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You can walk down that trail better than me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are we up for election? Sure. Patrick, you want to take over? Okay. All right. You'll have to take vice chair then. Four chair. I nominate Ben Niles for vice chair of ZBA. All in favor for Ben as vice chair? All right, five zero zero. I nominate Rich as chair for ZBA. I'll second that. All right, all in favor? All right, five zero zero. Congratulations, gentlemen. Thank you. And we have I the changes yes. Yes. that were proposed to our procedures, and I would move that we accept those changes that were provided in the staff memo. Sure. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. All right, five zero zero. So for a discussion of other um, items, I did want to bring up something. So earlier, Chuck, you asked a question. I thought I'd answer it. Um, what uh, Patrick was asking me was if I recalled the way that we voted on the previous billboard. He was trying to remind me. He, we weren't talking about the current petition. That's why he was off mic. I just wanted to point that out. Understood. But I wanted to make sure that I at least explained to you what was happening. Um, I move we approve the minutes as presented. Do I hear a second? I wasn't here. Do you second? Oh, sure. All right. All in favor? All opposed? All abstain? So, motion made by Lynn, seconded by Chuck, 302. And for the final.
I'll second it. All in favor? Yeehaw. Five zero zero. Thank you. Stop it.